If you send money to your loved ones internationally, do it with the Western Union app. Once you've downloaded it, you can send money around the world or back home in just a few taps, so family and friends can pick up cash fast. Download the Western Union app and send money today. Western Union. Fast, easy, reliable. Offered by Western Union Financial Services, Inc., NMLS 906983, or Western Union International Services, LLC, NMLS 906985. Terms apply. At SheFit, we know the fitness industry makes a lot of empty promises. We're done with shortcuts and quick fixes. No woman should be let down or held back, especially by her clothing. It's time to experience the only sports bra that's as strong as you are. Available in the widest range of sizes. Easy on and off, with 50% less bounce than the Nike Pro. It's time to feel real support from SheFit. Save $10 today at SheFit.com slash 2022. This is Jordan Grace, and you're listening to the Social Suplex Podcast Network. BWB, this is One Nation Radio. You better get it right. Rich Ladder, James Boyd came to give him life. The Blackest Wrestling Podcast has come to kick all ass and drop his six feet if they kick it trash. Word, let me welcome y'all to something different. And if you dig it, man, you should let some friends listen. We be getting it in. That's on the regular, dude. Ravish and flow, but this shit rule. See, James don't rap, so I had to break it down. The whole network, man, we coming for the crown. Raps in the columns, I keep them both covered Making the beats too, so the listeners can bump it Hit us with the rating, yeah, I'm saying it's a five Before you hit it, talk, bob your head side to side It's One Nation Radio, and this is the beginning It's Rich, and I'm here with James It's time to listen to One Nation you got to the power of the pyramid this is Mike Sempervivi from WrestlingObserver.com. Check me out on Wrestling Observer Live every day. And also check out your boys, Rich and James, on One Nation Radio. Uh, this is Kenny Omega. We're listening to One Nation Radio. Check it out, guys. These guys know what's up. Big Kenny Omega fans. That's all it counts to me. Goodbye and good night. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's edition of One Nation Radio. I'm James Boyd. And here with me, I have Rich Lott. What's going on, man? Not much, man. Um, sad times in the world of pro wrestling. Um, the death of Scott Hall, Razor Ramon, whatever you know him as. And um, yeah, man, we kind of have had like a day to kind of process all of this because we were told that he was being taken off life support. And um, it was just past 8 p.m. Uh, they announced, like WWE officially announced it. Uh, that he had succumbed to apparently he had three heart attacks. Um, Scott Hall, anybody knows anything about him? He had this very rough, uh, he had the, the dreaded personal demons that everyone talks about. I think he's a, um, like if we had to make a list of guys in wrestling throughout history who were like on that personal demons list, like he would be one of the people that they associate that term with. And, in I want to say like 10 years ago, he kind of turned it all around. Um, and I think this was a case of like, you know, he was, he had to, he was, uh, I think he passed, there were complications from his hip surgery. So it wasn't like he, he free fell back in anything, uh, to my knowledge or anything like that. But I remember him showing up for the WWE hall of fame ceremony in 2014. And he looked almost as good as he had since he was an active wrestler. And um, I think the the deal with it is, um, is it's pretty sad. A lot of people have a lot of positive memories of Hall uh, throughout, you know, the wrestling business and history. But um, I, I think, you know, it kind of starts for him. Like, obviously, he's been around since the 80s. He was in AWA. There was a long story before he uh, before his wrestling career began. He actually killed a guy and that kind of like stuck with him through his whole life. Uh, but you know, throughout the nineties, Scott Hall is one of the most important pieces of pro wrestling history. As far as changing the business, he was never this main eventer or anything like that. He was never this superstar or anything like that, but he was a guy in the right place at the right time, but also was not a mark. He was, he was taught the, the, the business kind of by Kurt Henning 
and you know maximizing your value and him and kevin nash changed wrestling forever hate it hate it if you want but them going to wcw creating the guaranteed money um system essentially kind of opened shit up for wrestlers and um i think that it is you know a testament to him for you know kind of being just like an intercontinental championship guy in the nineties that he's kind of like stuck around in in that mythologized lore. I guess this is this part of this is like him being on the side of the click. Like he wasn't on the Bret Hart side or anything. So like um the click, you know, kind of mythologized that that lore uh for him. And then of course he's an NWO um uh, you know, when him and Nash were going together in NWO at the beginning, that shit was that shit was dope. Like, yeah, like, you know, uh, very sad to hear of his death. And I, you know, it, it sucks to see anyone go. I think he was 63. But like, I feel like this is like this was the best case scenario that you could ask for with Scott Hall. I feel like especially like knowing, you know, the trouble we had outside the ring. Um. There was a show on ESPN at the time um, that was a bit of a, you know, um, sports writers get together and pitch stories and then they cover the stories or they showed or they gave the illusion of them in a meeting room pitching stories uh, and then, you know, throw to uh, what they had. I think it was called it may have been ESPN uh, 60. Can't remember what it was. Yeah. E60. E60. Yeah. So they sometime in the uh, late aughts, they covered Scott Hall and they talked about how Scott Hall was, you know, talked about what more or less what you talked about with his career. Like he was this guy that was, a, a, you know, one of the one of the one of the bigger stars of the peak of American professional wrestling of the generation um, over the last 30 years. And like he's having all these problems and then and, and they show, you know, where he started from show this, you know, kind of, uh, show this, show the Razor Ramon to Scott Hall, Scott Hall outsiders show the, show that then showed like where he was ne- then at the time. And he was like working in, working, you know, Indies doing managerial type stuff. And, you know, he's showing ass as a manager and like, he is sad. It's very sad. And, and then he talks about his problems and the things that happened to him, specifically like the time he had to, you know, in self-defense murder somebody, um, or, so, or what do you call it? Manslaughter, or whatever you call it. I don't know, uh, the technical term for it, but, and they talked about, you know, how, you know, he was on steroids and he was doing all these painkillers and stuff to wrestle at the time. Like so many people that, you know, from that era that, you know, didn't make it to even make it to 63 talked about how bad it was talked about, and then showed his son, Cody, who was, he didn't really have much relationship with. And then how he wanted to, you know, uh, wrestle as well and how he was, you know, he was struggling really bad. And then, they, you know, and then after that, like DDP reached, allegedly one or either DDP or, or him reached out to each other. And then they do the, you know, like the series of him with DDP. And that's, you know, as he, ch- as he, you know, turn it over better as like, this is like right after he's like DDP had just turned around Jake Snake. Mm-hmm. Um, or, or they're both like, you know, in with DDP at the time, at the same time and DDP helping, trying to help both of them. And like, you're right. When he showed up, um, at that time, when he's back on WWE television, he's, you know, he's sitting at ringside for takeovers and he's throwing the toothpick. Um, and you know, he cuts, you know, he does his hall of fame speech and, you know, he says like, uh, bad times don't last, but bad guys do like that was one of the happier, you know, stories of of this whole era of this per- one of the one of the one of those guys that you think of, you know, top twenty names you think of of that era. Um, like he's on hard times and he's able to turn it around, right? Like, and you know, and you know, to see that that stuff still, you know caught up to him even though he turned it around because of so much he all the stuff he did um it's sad but in a way given how bad it was i remember like going out of my way to message you and kirby and everybody else like yo i did not know 
any of this stuff with Scott Hall. This is bad. Like, he could die. And this was like... It's like a decade ago. That was over a decade ago. And now, and the fact that he was able to make another, um, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 years um, to to then have, you know, been able to, like, give us a few, you know, uh, moments of, of fun with him there. You know, there was a good side. There was, there was, you know, something good on the back end of what we saw. Like, I'm, I'm you know... I, I wasn't some huge Scott Hall fan, but I was happy for the fact that like there was a turnaround to the story. It's unfortunate that um that he that he's passing, but um as far as legacy talk or you know the way or his um the way people view him in the industry or whatever else, like I feel like he was able to turn a lot of that around. So I for the better. So uh, from that perspective, uh that's the positive I'm taking out of it. Um so um it's unfortunate. Um, but I'm not, uh, but I, I think that we all, um, we're, we're going to see a lot of guys still, um, that, you know, didn't die, that didn't go or, you know, given they were in bad situation, didn't, didn't leave us, you know, like Eddie or, or like Eddie did or whatever else. But, um, we're going to see the, rem- we're still going to see some of the ramification of guys dying still too soon from that era of working on those, you know, damn near boxing rings um and doing all those shows and, and doing all that traveling like it's i don't i don't think we're going to see all those all those guys make it to 80 like we will hope and you know um that's unfortunate but uh he was able to to you know at the by the end give us um some last really uh fun moments uh, a couple couple of things about his career I thought that were pretty interesting was like, you know, it was really interesting how his WWE career was handled. Um, you think about when he first comes in and he's kind of like this big, bad, scary heel and they shoot him, you know, kind of to the main event scene like right away. And then, you know, they don't like crown him or anything. But after that, he becomes like this. He becomes a baby face within a year in the company. And from there, he's like the consistent kind of kind of presence whenever they need to elevate someone they could have them go through Riz Ramon whenever they needed to uh, bring some st- stability back to the belt they can put it back on Riz Ramon so that's why he had the Intercontinental title a lot of the time then I thought it was interesting in 1995 uh, you know there's a book I read called like Titan Sinking like he you know he really wanted to go to the next level in WWE and i think he was you know you think about all those people that like those sorry people undertaker wrestled over all those years he never wrestled the hall like apparently there was like you know he wanted to like turn heel in like 1995 and it's like you know can he get to that main event scene like in you would think <laughs> he would be able, just as a guy that you know reg- was regarded as like a pretty good worker for the time through a great punch had a lot of size on him he didn't necessarily wrestle to his size which was always interesting about him um and you know he he would bump for people and he would show ass and he would you know he would do like th- these kind of things and uh it's interesting that they never really Vince didn't ever really see him at a top level like to even like hey fight the undertaker for a couple months like I, I don't believe you ever headlined an event aside from uh you know he challenged bret hart once at 93 royal rumble but it just wasn't in the cards for him so the the cool thing about hall was like yo he he would ask vince these questions like what can i do to he, he would he would start on vince like this he was like so vince are you are you happy with my performance and then vince would be like yeah i'm happy with your performance and then Hall would be like, well, what can we do or what can I do to, you know, really make more money or whatever? Because he felt like he plateaued. And then it, 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 he would kind of back Vince into this corner to really like either shit or get off the pot with him. So um, mm-hmm. he, he was a part of like a, a class of guys that kind of rebuilt WWE, I would say, um, in, in the new generation. I'm a huge new generation fan. And it, you know it's always interesting to think about what, what Scott Hall looks like in WWE in 97, 98, stuff like that. Just a lot of like cool kind of, you know, what if scenarios. Are you a fan of, and you've said this to me before, but when you, add, when you say this to me, I'm always like, are you a fan of new generation? Or are you a fan of the top people in new generation? And like, never mind some of the bullshit you're putting on like nails. Well, I'll say this, like, I think it I think WWE should be should wrap their arms 
around that time period more than they do. That's fair. Be, because like, you know, you know me, I'll watch, I'll pull out and watch like 1993 and be fucking entertained. Um, 1994, I love 1994. And I, I just thought they were doing a lot of interesting things at the time. Aside from, you know, of course, there were the occupational gimmicks, but like all the best guys of that time, like you said, Brett, Sean, Diesel, Razor, Bulldog, Bulldog, In and Out, Owen, Undertaker, like, like there was something there happening. So, but, you know, they couldn't, and then eventually Triple H and Rock came and, and, you know, they were under like different gimmicks and all that, but you could kind of see the pieces getting put together. It was like, them trying to uh you them, know, them getting into and changing their mind out of on every every other week it seemed right and you know i th- i think hall was like he he was effortlessly cool and a lot of wrestlers couldn't sniff to be that um <laughs> and you know the whole thing is hilarious like he had Vince McMahon and Pat Patterson convinced he was a genius because he um uh, you know, spoke with the Tony Montez. They had, they had never, never seen, seen Scarface, Scarface. Which, is, which is like 10 years old at that point, which is hilarious. So another point to Scott Hall for working these cons. And, um, you know, he, he had a he had a great run with the NWO for, you know, the as far as it went, you know, with him. I remember being a kid and seeing Hall and Nash, like, eventually feuding and not liking it. I was like, man, these guys, like... And then I always remember the match where I think it was Halloween Havoc 98 where Nash power bombs Hall and walks out the ring and loses by count. He's like, I don't even want to beat him. I, I remember you being like kind of pissed because I was like, yo, they're like brothers. Like, why are they fighting? I didn't like that, but 98? Um, yeah. Had he had, had, um, had the giant Nash power bomb disaster happened by then? Yes. So they had already banned the power bomb. Yeah, this was like the end of the year. For some reason, okay, because yeah, because that's like because I know that's like ninety eight, ninety nine, right? And like Nash is like, I'm a heel, but I'm gonna do this baby face ass thing, and I'm gonna get over. Right. Thanks. He's about to be the Booker, <laughs> or he was the Booker, or what? Or at least, or at least he already had Bischoff's ear. Um, yeah. Yeah. But. Scott Hall, very entertaining squash match wrestler. He would fucking kill guys with the razor's edge. Uh, some of those squashes are on YouTube from when he would be working in like the action zone or like any type of random house show. But um, yeah, man, I'll uh, like rest in peace to Scott Hall. But like James said, it, it's like a thing. Like, obviously, I can't say I was grateful or anything, but it's like he, this dude wasn't even supposed to get this far. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess we can uh, we can start the show after that. Yeah. So um, I, more more news um, or bad news. Friday on SmackDown um, in the middle of a match with um, uh, uh, Rich Holland, um, Big E gets belly to belly superplexed. On the floor, and he lands on top of his head. Um, he breaks his neck in two places. Um, luckily, uh, or as it happens, he basically goes he goes uh, stiff. Um, they they finish the match off without him, and then he gets stretched off, and uh, you find out uh, like pretty soon from him or later in the night that. He's it, you know. He can. He has all, you know. He has feeling. He says he f- still felt strong. Uh, the next night, he tells us that uh, that like it's just broken uh, vertebrae, just vo- broken vertebrae. It uh, is not, you know, uh, damage to his uh, spinal cord. Um, there's nothing crazy outside of just broken uh, vertebrae. Uh, he won't need surgery. And um, man, what a scare! Like I. I heard about it and then like I searched around. I'm like, wait, what? Cause I saw, I saw his video first and then, cause then I don't, we don't watch SmackDown or I don't watch SmackDown. So I'm like, I'm looking for the video. I see the video. I'm just like, Oh my God. Like if I had watched that live, I would have, sh- I would have shrieked in horror. Um, like that is a gigantic dude. Um, 
that biomechanically does not just does not have much give in his neck. Like that is like he will never be you know Koto Bushi or Mayu Itani. So like when you don't have that kind of flexibility, all that shit is going to all that pressure on top of his head is going right to his spine. Like he's lucky to be alive. Um, that was really scary. And I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I got, you know, I'm sure I, we have similar sentiments and we're happy that like, it's, it was, it was about as for a broken neck, it ended up as good as it could be for a guy with that size on him. Yeah, man. I saw this thing and I was furious when I, when I noticed who was giving the suplex to him. And I was mm-hmm. like, and I don't want to like throw Ridge Holland under the bus or anything like this isn't like something like where I have a personal issue with the with the guy. Let's get that out of the way. But I saw that and I was like, so what happened here? Like, <laughs> like, was it a case of where like Ridge went before Biggie was ready? Because that's like kind of what it looks like to me. I have not asked uh, for the technical thing that that went wrong, which I, I actually mean to. So but just looking at it, if it, it felt like either E wasn't set already to, to go up and then Ridge was kind of just like, you know, he, he got him as far as he could, but I don't know, man, it, belly, belly over the, over the head suplex outside the ring on the floor, on the floor, this much padding. Look, I watch a lot of wrestling that is unsafe that is risky that is violent it is a tough business and it is a business where shit happens right but this is supposed to be the safe company (laughs) so you would think uh this wouldn't be something that they would do um and i saw you know the reaction to it and i was like i was just like horrified for biggie it was like fuck broken neck damn and then just thinking about the year that he's had and then like what he was heading into and it was just like yeah they took the belt off of him yeah they 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 don't got shit for him yeah he's back with a new day and a tag team yeah he's probably gonna be in a six-man tag match at wrestlemania and then you know this it's like fuck um but ridge obviously has had a history like we knew he he hurt himself uh, in nxt like on a freak accident before he dropped johnny gargano directly on his shit um one time which and by the caused, grace of god he didn't break his he didn't break his neck right and it's like you know biggie got as lucky as as one can get and you know i hope he makes a recovery and uh like a, a great recovery and he comes back you know hopefully like you know this actually helps his career you know he, he comes back and you know there's a little bit of like few because i don't think they were ever gonna go with him again right yeah. but uh, and, and then hopefully this isn't a case where Vince is like, oh, uh, he gets hurt. I, I can't trust him. Like, you know, yeah. and um, it's a whole thing, man. And it, it's it's like, yo, like, nah, man, like, like this shouldn't have happened. Like not in the safe promotion. No. Yeah, I don't I don't know what's going on. Um, like, I I wouldn't all of a sudden, you know, ban it like it's the like it's a freaking um, power driver. Right. Uh, it was like you know, was the last time you've seen somebody get dropped on their head on a on a belly belly suplex? I haven't seen that in years. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I guess the closest you can say is like the Phoenix Plex that uh, that happened with a uh, Hiromu and, and Dragon Lee, but that's a Phoenix mm-hmm. Plex. It's not the same thing. Right. Um, but it, you know, it's it's super unfortunate, and you know, you mentioned um. Holland's history, like he might. This is need, only going to keep happening. Like he, he, yeah. he might just need to go back and, and train more. Yeah, he might just like, need to go back and train more. Like you know, the people that I didn't hear nearly as loud. I don't know if it was out there. I haven't really paid attention. I didn't want to see whatever people were saying about Rich Holland. Like for all I know, he got death threats, and if he did, that sucks. Um, but um. You know, when people start fu- people, when people are reckless and fuck people up and hurt, are a danger to them to themselves and others, and like they need to go back and train more. Like, like I know, I know we were quick to do this with uh, with with the women and especially Naya at the time, but like this dude has had three big incidents where like somebody either tore something up, broke something, or, or damn near died um, in like a two year span. He, it's okay if he goes back and trains more. 
Like yeah. nobody's gonna miss it. No, the like the main roster is not gonna miss him with not not being on the main roster. <laughs> yeah. Not. And, and this is you know looking at what WWE's future like is set up with like it's these big young green guys that they're putting on TV and putting in spots way before they're ready for them. So this feels like it's something that's. And then you look at the guy, the size of the guys in the main roster. Big like, dudes. You're th- big now, it's guys. one thing when you're throwing around if you're NXT and you're the Creed brothers and you're throwing around. Um, Eichner, MSK or like something. this yeah. happened. This happened on last week. Like uh, one of the Cree brothers threw Eichner on his shit, and it's one thing when it's the size of Eichner. It's another thing when it's like it's Drew McIntyre, mm-hmm. right? It's like Corbin. somebody's going to get hurt. Randy Orton, you know, right. shit like that. Like Roman Reigns, no, Sheamus. These ain't no small dudes, right? So like these. These young big green guys are going to come in with this this energy and feeling like they got to prove something and lift people up, and it's gonna. This is only going to keep happening right now. Like, I unless, hope not, but you might be right. Yeah. So, um, hopefully, you know, shout out to Biggie, and you know, he said he had a, of course, excellent perspective on it and everything. You know, uh, he he handled it a lot better than I would have. I'd probably been freaking out and like not wanting to like show my face to the world anything like that like he was seemingly in good spirits he's made a joke he's like you're gonna break your neck do it in birmingham and you know birmingham is dr james andrews so uh he's you know hopefully you know he he comes back in in like a year you know i, I don't know like nine months a year however long that takes so yeah um wish him a speedy recovery and everything um also, I guess now move on since we're already talking about like WWE adjacent stuff. Um, attached to the Big E um, moment was the debut of Pete Dunne, um, former NXT UK champion, former NXT tag team champion. Um he has debuted in a stable with Ridge Holland and Sheamus. I, I believe it's Sheamus' a stable. Um, and he is going by the name Butch. There's no last name. He's just Butch. Not not Butch Cassidy. Not, not the Butcher. Just Butch. Um, uh, he showed up in one of those hats. Um... That he showed up in one of those hats that looked like he just found out that the Titanic didn't make it to the to uh, the new land to America. Um, Shine your shoes, I, Governor. I, I I don't know, man. Um, obviously, he's talented enough to overcome Butch, but like it's the same thing we've been saying ever since. Hold no, on, no, he's not. Hold on, <laughs> hold on. If he had a competent booker, if Tony Khan named him Butch, it would still work. If this man named him Butch, he's probably fucking dead. Um, so, uh, where I was getting at was, like, we've been having this conversation since the Viking experience in 2019. These na- Some of these names are fucking ridiculous, and a few people are going to still be able to make it and have decent careers, relatively speaking, make a- and make a good living with these terrible names, um, which is only then going to enforce like, well, this person can survive with this name. So I can name you fucking banjo. Um, I, I just think that it's needless to do. Like, I don't know why, I don't know what Bush does for him or Bush does for whatever Vince is thinking creatively that Pete Dunn couldn't do. I don't get it. I, I don't get giving someone a career killing gimmick off the rip just like like yo here's the thing like like they've tragically scarred him we don't know if that is career killing based off the name because like all he's wearing is a hat like if he shows with that same hat and he's pete dunn we think yeah it's a dumb looking hat but like we're kind of like okay whatever he's with the uk gang makes sense right like they tried to pair rich holland and pete dunn when it with mcafee goon two years ago remember that so until you know uh uh, Rich Holland fucked up his leg, so I feel like I, I just I know don't how get. This plays I just don't out. get Butch. Oh, we know how it plays out, but I, that's what makes it more maddening. Is like, why for who for what? Because they don't care. Like, <laughs> like they yes. Uh, 
great comment. Solo Doma. Even Marie named Dewdrop and Kayfabe, yet Dewdrop kept her dumb name and even Marie is cut. <laughs> like it's the right. same thing. No, it's, I, it's I got one worse. I got one better for you. Pete Dunn isn't just uh you know this five hundred day reigning NXT UK champion. He's not just a former NXT tag team champion. He is a person that has been on fucking Survivor Series in a title match before. He Doesn't was in matter. the two thousand. He was in the two thousand nineteen Survivor Series uh, NXT match against Adam Cole and had the best match, one of the best matches on the main roster that year. His name already exists. Like we can't. Like the whole part when people are like, you know, you change the names when, once you come to main roster because people, even though you know, it's a third brand, people might not know who this person is. Whatever. Cool. You seen him on fuck on a big four hit review before? This is fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah, um, you know it's like, why didn't they change his name to Butch in NXT? Like, it's like, what is NXT for? He wasn't being prepared to be Butch. Nope. Like, nope. He <laughs> like was a, he was a fucking drunk manipulating killer. <laughs> so, like, it's like, what's the point of NXT? Um, uh, you know, I, I the, thought two point oh take care of this. I you thought know, it was supposed to help you seamlessly transition. It's supposed to be, it, it, you know. This is not the way. You know, I, I think everyone's had a hearty laugh at Pete Dunn's expense uh, at this point. You oh, know. I haven't looked, but I'm sure the I'm sure if I oh. type in Pete Dunn, Britt rest. It's it's. Oh boy, yeah, they it's, they, it's, they lighten them up. It is. They lighten yeah. them up. Yeah, he got he got to hold it too because he's holding the check. So if you can hold the check, you know you you can hold these jokes too. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, man, I. I look at him and I say, oh, he's going to eat all the pins for the unit oh, yeah. and he'll be done, you know, yeah. and whatever. So uh, a- another, another stellar, stellar job in star creation by by WW, by the WWE and Vince McMahon and the, the creative genius, uh, you know, j- j- just wh- who does it better, James? Well, I mean... You want me to give you the real list? Are you, are you yeah, obviously you're being uh you're you you say yes that rhetorically. Uh, I, I think the thing for me is just like when you talk about the star creating thing is like well you know what it is they don't see him as a star they see Rich Holland as a star because he's five foot ten Brock Lesnar and he has he's a first like and last name. Yeah, right. It's the same thing that happened when you had um when you got up um you got up uh. Hit row and like they, the person they wanted to push was Top Dollar, not Swerve, not not Adonis, not Brandy. You're they're clueless on talent, man. What a time! Like they wanted I, to push, they wanted to push Top Dollar after they just screwed up Keith Lee and called him Bearcat, and then didn't, didn't want anything to do with him. Like how? Like, do you remember? I forgot who it was. Like, it was it was a uh, Mike Fratilla. He it is back when he was doing international prospects for the draft, and he talked about some guy. I think it was French, and he said, it, "I remember he's like, you know, he said hey, this dude is two years away from being two years away, bro." Yes, Bruno Cab- Cabalco or something bro. like that. Bro, top dollar compared to Keith Lee was two years away from being two years away. Yeah, yeah. Um, Keith Lee, a lot more experience, pretty much. And then, like, they negated that experience, like, with what they were having Keith Lee do. So it was like, yo, you got all this experience. It doesn't matter. We well, want to put you, you in got, this well, little you remember, box. Well, you got to remember, like, he probably, you know, Vince probably went down there one day and was like, hmm, you know, I, that Keith Lee guy, he looks like money, but he sounds too smart for his own good. So let me try mm. to find somebody else that I think sounds smart enough for their own good. And then, sure enough, they screw. They managed to screw that up too. So um, it's incredible. You know, it's incredible. It's, it's, it's really, incredible it's handling of talent. Incredible handling for the for for this talent for this black utopia. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, just just black excellence just just being spread around everywhere. You know, in in world wrestling entertainment. Remember you know? when they took? Remember when they had Rich Swan, New Day, and Sasha take that picture to say black excellence? How quickly they all lost some belts after that picture. <laughs> remember that? I do. Remember that? I do. You remember? Yeah, I, um, I remember. Yeah, do you remember? So, um, you know, we're on right now. We're on high alert right now. Seth Rollins is out in front of the crowd. So, um, oh, it's nine o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so then, you know, then you know, this it might must be, be time. It might, it might be about that time. It might be about that time. It might be. We wanted to make yeah. sure we were on air. You know, just in case yes. any live reaction. Yes. James yes. has to show up. I do not. 
but you know, yes, yes, I, I, I said it would be Seth Rollins defending the WWE months ago, but um, yeah, so we'll see um, if that happens. But yeah, man. <clears throat> Besides that, it needs to uh, happen. I, 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 we, we, y'all know what we talking about. I ain't gonna put it out there. You know, I don't want you know I don't want the universe to screw me at the last second. But it needs to happen. It needs to happen tonight. I'm sick of this shit. I need, I need, I need, I need, I need confirmation. I need confirmation. I need it. Uh, I need this done with. I'm tired of this being, this thing out there that could just, you know, rear his ugly head. I need to be gone officially forever for next, or not forever, but like the next three to five years. So. Honestly, all, all, all the wind I feel like has come out of the sails, like on this shit, like he could have jumped over already and it would have been way more impactful. I, I don't so. know. I don't know you talking about. So uh, yeah, I don't know you talking about. But we're going to get to some Don't questions in, in the mailbag. We actually opened up the mailbag this week. So I specifically put directions out there. Please no long list fantasy booking future scenarios. Like, no, man, I'm not naming the next 10 champions and then telling you how they're all going to get there. Um, I'm, I'm not doing these. My my top 35 wrestlers of all time, you know, all the, you know, whatever. But um, we appreciate you guys sending in the questions, though. First one comes from Greg Johns. He says, do you have a link to pass O and R themes that we can listen to? Also, are you working on a new theme for the 10 year anniversary show? The one you have now always gets me hype. I was just wondering. Um, so I guess thinking about it, I've only wrapped on two of the one nation radio themes. Some of the themes were just instrumentals. We did voiceovers over um, and things like that. I believe the uh, O and R theme is up on YouTube somewhere. It, the the old one may have been on my SoundCloud page, but uh, I'll make it available, Greg, and um, maybe I'll put it up on like my current YouTube page so you can listen to it. Um, as far as like the new theme, I've been kicking around thinking about making a new theme for like a while now, so we'll see. Yeah, I you know I'm not in control of the music. You are you are you are the producer. You are the rapper. You are <laughs> you are the vi- musical vision, uh, but. <laughs> Uh, like I would enjoy it if like every just about every year we had a new one. But you know, I, I'm not the person that's creating this shit. Like, it, so it's up to you. I mean, if you want to, if you want to rap on it, James, you know, we. Can, I did not. Can, I do not. You know? I did not. I just. I didn't ever say anything about me doing doing anything involved with it. I just said that it would be cool if we had one every year to kind of distinguish. Uh, or I didn't give that reason, but like it'd be a nice way to be able to distinguish immediately. Um, oh my God, Sony Deville just walked out and she's dressed in a. Uh, blue and black suit with vertical stripes, and she looks like Crip a Beetlejuice. Cop. She looks like Crip gross. Beetlejuice. God damn it, Beetlejuice! I don't know what you call it, uh, but yeah, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I forgot what we were talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be cool if we did that, but I mean, that's that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work to be out come up with new something new, new new verses every year. New verses and like new like there, there's only so many things you can say I think in like either like an eight bar verse about the wrestling podcast so you know we'll we'll see what happens if 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 I get the right because like part I'm not worried about the raps or whatever I'm worried about like all right let's you know how how what am I gonna do with the beat I'm more interested in the beat or whatever so mm-hmm. um yeah so next question comes from at Dre Zera he says do you think Rampage needs to be two hours long due to the size of the AEW roster if they are going to do two shows two separate shows in like they are in two different or, or areas and they basically uh, tape slash air them um, you know two hours at a time on some you know Smackdown Raw type thing well, Ross, three hours being my point. Um, I I wouldn't mind it. I think that at the time slot, it just would never happen because, like, we've seen um, what happens, like, just from ten to eleven. Now, imagine Friday night, eleven to twelve. Whew. Like, right. I'm sure, it would, I'm sure it would dominate that time slot. But like, people, you know, people would have ain't got no damn sense for for uh, the relative to the time slot. They'd be like, "Oh my god, this thing did this thing did four hundred and fifty thousand views. This is awful." Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, uh, I don't think it needs to be two hours long either way. Like, it's a competitive business. It's like you know, 
and they've shown that they rotate people. I kind of like that. You always have the ability to give people time off. Everyone else can still work everywhere. Ring of Honor is kind of going to be a thing now. So I like it the way it is. Um, and as far as like the, the size of the roster, I don't necessarily think it's any bigger than like, I don't know. I, I guess the roster in comparison to the amount of TV time is available. Maybe the correct way to put it rather than, hey, this roster is just so big because like, Come on now. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, next question comes from King Edward. What's up, Daddy? He says, who's a dark horse to hold the New Japan world title by year's end? A dark horse. <sighs> Is Tai Chi too far gone? Um, yes. Okay. Um... Ishii's too far gone. That's not even Dark Horse. This is never happening. Um, Sonata. I won't do it. I'm I'm going to go way left field. I'm going to go Zack Sabre Jr. I, 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 I need to hear from Jeremy or Josh to tell me, like. I think they said that's good. I know they like him. He's obviously talented enough to be a top to be at the top of New Japan as a as a Gaijin heel or whatever else. I just don't know if that draws domestically at all. Yeah, the the other one would be the Great Okan, but I mean, I feel like the the countdown clock is happening till he eventually wins it. Yeah, I can see that over next, but I don't. I, it might be too soon this year. Like, I think next year makes more sense. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like people like that. Like, I I just think like they fucking love Sonata, man. Like they, they do. So I I can see it. Um I would I would hate the Sonata World title. <laughs> I think yeah, so whatever. Not about me. Um next question comes from Joey O'Doherty uh, at Awesome O Joe. Uh, shouts out to Joey. I actually guessed it on his Moxley podcast that should be out in a couple weeks. Uh, he says, having a week to digest it, what are your feelings on Mox and Danielson's tag team, and where do you think it's going? Oh, I mean, if it's a real thing, it's going to the moon! Like, <laughs> that's that. Like if they're going to be a tag team, if they're going to be on some mega aces shit, then like they're going to win the belts, and they're going to you know, wrestle a few people, and they're going to have some awesome matches on pay-per-view, uh, with the Young Bucks or the Lucha Bros or whatever, or you know, Pride and or Proud and uh, Powerful and whoever else, and um, then you know they'll break up and they'll go right back at it. I imagine, but uh, yeah, like there's so that that tag team division so loaded. Like that's the kind of the thing. Like when I when people talk or we were talking about just a couple of questions earlier about like if they went to a fourth hour of, of live television, I, I, the reason why I wouldn't mind it is because like. There are so many tag teams now that it's like it, it almost um, it almost feels like they have so much talent to where like you can't they don't really they don't really get into their tag division bag like they used to like you know a year ago and I and I kind of miss that so um, so like that kind of be the, the reason because they have so many like not only do they have so much depth they have so much tag team depth to th- uh, to throw at shows. Um, and get, get, you know, tertiary angles off the ground on TV as opposed to on darker Twitter. Or BT. I probably will shock you with my feelings on this, but I don't really have an interest in seeing them compete as a tag team. Um, I think I think it w- would be a better situation like if he, they were each other's kind of regular tag team partners, like if there was like, you know, uh, kind of like all Japan, like, hey, you know, there's a there's someone that you normally tag with or whatever. But as far as like them becoming like a group like or excuse me, a tag team, I'd rather than be in a faction together kind of as singles rather than be a tag team and competing in the tag division. Because I'm like, I think I that's think- all going to happen. I think they're going to start their own faction, bring in people and then like they're going to tag occasionally. And then like they're so big that it's like you have to make them tag champions mm-hmm. because it's like, like what if you're going to put them in this whole angle like you kind of have to make them tag together as like they're all they're off they're this is their side quest because they're not like a, after titles right now so how do you right. make the best of what they're doing they're doing you they're doing utility duty like they're doing what kenny omega was doing in 2020 
Right. Um, like I would have probably been interested in seeing Danielson be the TNT title or, or TNT champion at some point, and then Moxley and Hangman eventually get into it like over the summer. But I guess they're not yeah. going that direction. So uh, I, I would, yeah, I would like that better than the tag team thing. Um, let's see. At NJ Lentity says thoughts on the New Japan Cup so far. None. <laughs> oh, I have, well, I have not watched. <laughs> you didn't watch Heard the Cup with us? Heard us a chalk fest. You didn't watch uh, the Actually, Cup? yes, sure. we did. We did. We watched one one day of it. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, so what? I, so I've I've only seen. Um, so I saw the show that had Sonata and um, Desperado, and also, um, so they also had like Naito and and freaking Yujiro, which had just an incredible. Uh, just an awful match with like an incredible like last like two minutes or ninety seconds that like and I, and post match almost made it worth it like almost almost don't don't do that shit no more but yeah uh, like Sonata and Desperado was awesome and like Okada like basically like being everybody's heel because he's so much better than everybody else and he's like Desperado you're a junior champion you know normally we would have this match at the uh, at the anniversary show but we're doing it here. The first on the you know first round of um New Japan Cup. Like, how about this, bro? Like, I ain't gonna beat you with Rainmaker. Like, I'm just gonna beat you with I'm gonna get you out of here with the money clip. And like if if you keep pissing me off, you'll you you will you will bring you will, you're calling down the thunder and I, you will force me to use the the Rainmaker and I'm putting your ass out. And like that was the whole story of that match and it was awesome. Um and like with that context, like that I like I feel like it's a be- that's a much better context for like him using the money clip now, where like he's so, like he's a heel to everybody, and he already was. He's already been a heel to everybody since 2017. But like now it's like I'm going to antagonize y'all with the money clip, disrespect shit y'all with money clips, and then like y'all got to fight back from underneath, and like y'all got to bring it, and then like and then like then if you really want to beat me, you're gonna have to bring out the desperation or the anger out of me to use the the, the rainmaker. Like I I, I kind of like that. Um, so. But yeah, it was um the match was great. Um I have not watched Shingo and Ishii. I have not watched ELP and um and Osprey. Uh I have heard great things. Um there's also one other match on oh Hiromu and in in uh Suzuki I heard was I heard is crazy. Yeah, so like those are matches I need to get to this week. It just I'm spent so far behind on stardom uh that um I had I hadn't had the time. So um let's see. Next question comes from Starfleet Blues. So shout out to Tom Batista. He said, AEW album, best beat, best verse, best overall song. Um, I guess he's trying to give me some shit here, but uh, <laughs> okay, I'll say the Nyla Rose beat is, is pretty dope. Uh, if it wasn't anything that I was involved with, I would probably say I like the Ricky Star song the best. It's called No Socks. So, um, yeah. James, I don't think has heard the album yet, but it'll be on streaming. So, um, he said thoughts on Scott Hall's legacy. We did that in the beginning. He said Alley Cat or Alley Catch Pass. Um, <laughs> which ROH vets would you like to see in the new ROH? Um, I mean, obviously, like Gresham in, in, in Bandito, obviously, Frankie Kazarian. I don't know. How it is. <laughs> wait, wait. So you mean like? So you mean like OGs and not actual people that are still in the roster or were still active on the roster? Which one he do you mean? Said, he just said, "Which ROH vets would you like to see in the new ROH?" I mean, okay, then Joe. Th- put, put Joe in. I want to see. I want to see the Joe Kingston feud. I want. I want, mm. I want to see that weekly. Them, them, them going at each other on the mic. Like that'd be yeah. the best, that'd be the best fucking pro, like talking program maybe ever. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that'd be pretty fun. That'd be fucking awesome. Maybe doing pull aparts. Like we get kicks in the parking lot getting getting hot down. <laughs> we get that again. <laughs> Next question comes from Sir Sam. He said for some brand synergy, because this week on the match guide is Maki Ito versus Rio Mizunami from the women's contender sh- tournament. What Joshi wrestlers would you like to see back or for the first time in AEW? Um. Okay, I'm gonna do non-stardom because that'd be too easy. Um. So, 
obviously, um, given that she, you know, had one of the best matches in uh, the women's side ever, um, and she only had like the, the the two matches I think, or the one match. Um, yeah, I want I want Oscar Vinny in on like over here. Like, I want to see what they can do. Like, they're fucking awesome. They're, they're one of the best like wrestlers in the world. And if they were like, I I mean, I think they're one of the top. I don't know, five, six, like, talents in, in, in women's wrestling in the world. So, yeah, that, that's kind of where I'm at. An incredible heel. An incredible, an incredible chicken shit heel will run, will run from you and then, like, do shitty stuff. Like, just, just had Arisa Nakajima in, in shambles in 2020. Um, they're great. So, yeah, uh, that, that would be my first pick. I will go with Takumi Roja. Um, I think that would be, <laughs> I think that would be a, um, it would be like dropping a Mentos in a bottle of Coke, uh, for, for you know, the women's division of Takumi came over, like she's a freelancer. She comes in, she beats people and, you know, she would kick the shit out of people. So I, I'm just concerned that like. There's nobody in the roster that would ever wrestle her that would have her matches with her that way. Now the Rose would. They've had a match before. Okay, so so one match. I mean Statlander. Um, I don't know if you're gonna be kicking Jade like that. That's um, what I'm getting at. Like I don't think there's anybody like unless she didn't unless she wants a, wants a volunteer as tribute. Look, <laughs> she'll do it. Thunder will do it. Um. I'd have to think. Uh, Jamie Hader will do it. Yeah. So Mercedes Martinez will do it. So yeah, and, and we got enough people. So, <laughs> so, um, Dan at Coffin Dan, what's up to Dan? He says, "How many WWE NFTs do you plan on trying to buy on WWE Moonsault?" Um, can I use a negative number? Sure. All right. Well, negative infinity. I'm not. I'm not buying. No NFTs from nowhere, especially from WWE. WWE is lucky. I like kind of even give them money at all, which I give money to Peacock. So technically, I, I don't really give money to WWE because they're renting WWE's product or whatever. So, you know, I feel like I've kind of like eliminated, you know, giving money to WWE out of my life right now. I, I've come to this sudden realization. So kind of happy right now. Thanks, Dan. Um, out of all the companies, how many companies would you less be likely to, to spend NFT money on Woo. than WWE? Okay. Um, I guess Meta Facebook would be... I, yeah. I, I would be less likely to give them money than WWE. Man. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I was thinking wrestling, but... I, 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 I just mean... I mean, like, that's how bad it is. Like, who else... Who are you... L- want to give money to lease for nfts at wwe like yeah i, I, I thought definitely definitely zuck definitely zuck yeah can't can't be giving zuck no money none um i definitely wouldn't want to give trump any money Ooh, yeah trump but i don't know NFT. what company he, i don't know what companies he owns at this point anymore right right um man yeah interesting um i i I'll have to think about that one some more. Uh, MJ DSPR, what round does James think Duke gets eliminated? Oh, uh, probably round of 32. I was looking at it. Uh, look, they set up a uh, a Michigan State Duke collision course in round oh, two. And, and like, and Not you again. already know, you already know, like, we love to lose to Michigan State historically in the tournament. I mean, if you look at the last, like, 15 years, y'all love to lose in the first weekend. Nah. Yeah. How many six, no. How many Sweet 16s y'all made in the last decade? I ha- look, I don't have or the last number offhand. Years. I, I don't have the number offhand, but uh, we've definitely lost in the Elite Eight a couple times. We got to the Final Four. We won the National Championship a couple times. So it's like. It's all across the board. So if you want to look that up while I uh, go through this here, 
Um, another question from MJ does PR. He says, was Scott Hall better in WWE or WCW? Um, hmm. Better. Uh, I have more fond memories of, of Razor Ramon than Scott Hall, but Scott Hall was a way bigger power player and like his biggest moments were like the NWO stuff. Like, I mean, but you know, some of that's tainted with like, you know, the fucking him dressed as a damn security guard, cattle prodding Goldberg and shit. Right. So, um, but yeah, like, I mean, this, the, 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 the ladder matches, uh, the, the Scott Hall, I'm sorry, the Bret Hart, uh, Royal Rumble match, the, the, the starting off with, with Savage, um, the, the one, two, three kid stuff, like, those are some of my favorite moments, like, as a kid watching wrestling, so, um, like, don't be wrong, like, the, the, him coming over was cool, him, you know, with, with, with Nash was cool, him, you know, Bash at the Beach was, you know, all time, um, the Outsiders as tag champions was, 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 was a big deal, At, you know, I, I was a huge, um, Wolfpack fan, cause I, you know, you get, you get the fuck away from Hogan, fuck him, um, but, yeah, um, I, it, it, it's I think close, it's clear. But I'll, it's close, but I'll still go. I'll still go Razor Ramon. I think it's clear. Like I feel like he didn't really have much of an incentive to really bust his ass in WCW, and he has like way like better matches in WWE as far as like you know, you know the stuff he did with Sean, um, winning their IC title a bunch of times. I think he was the US champion in WCW as well, but. He just wasn't counted on in the same way he was counted on in WWE, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, next question comes from uh, Hakeem. He said, at Keem wins again. He says, who is the breakout non-stardom Joshi so far this year? This year so far? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's hard. Like, there's nothing in my mind that, like, sticks out in the way that, like, uh, like, you know, like Mia Momono filling in for Takumi um, for like the Gaiism stuff last year, or like Maki Ito, um, like running through that tournament to get to you know um, their uh, Oda City show. What, what show was that? Oda City, where they end up, you know, uh, where she lost, but like, but um, so I, I I really can't think of anything. Um, I I mean they're they're push in Tokyo Joshi Pro for example they're pushing a woman named Yuki Arai who is an idol a, on, who's still an idol right now a successful idol like um she's a she's a big star like with her with what she's doing like as a celebrity and she also happens to wrestle and um I know Parker from uh, F4W thinks she's like the drizzling shits um but my first time ever seeing her. Um, was on the one four, uh, Tokyo Joshi Pro Cork and Hall, and like she was far from the bottom of Tokyo Joshi Pro, far from the bottom. Like she had a, I thought she had like a three and a quarter, three and a half star match, um, with Yuka. She obviously she's in there with Yuka. She's getting carried to an extent, but like I didn't think she was fucking anything up compared to like when I watched you know, Palm or. Palm Harajuku or like, uh, what's her name? Mocha. Like, there are some real, real rough wrestlers at, at the bottom of them cards in Tokyo Joshi Pro. Like, there's, you know, there's a couple. Like, I like Aris- Arisu Endo and I like, um, Suzume, but like, some of the people, like Raku, the drizzling shits. Uh, I'm trying to think who, I can't remember her name, but she's dressed up, she has a cat gimmick. She's dressed up like a cat. She's, she fucking sucks. Um, like, yeah, uh, but right now, because I haven't watched uh, any seedling and, you know, that's in, you know, in, uh, Ice Ribbon, I mean, most of Ice Ribbon is, <laughs> is out of Ice Ribbon now, right? Like, like, they, they, you know, with Prominence leaving, Mayu Yuki leaving, um, uh, Sakushi, she's wrapping up. Like, I don't know what the fuck Ice Ribbon got going on right now. I don't know. Like, you know, they're lucky enough that, uh, that Sheeta's doing, um, uh, their Cork and Hall show, uh, mm-hmm. this month. Or uh, actually this week, I think. Uh, or was it this past weekend? I can't remember. But, um, 
yeah, I, I I don't really have an answer in that way that I would say like uh, Ito or um or uh, Mio last year. Uh, there's still time. Somebody's bound to break through. This is the 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 case of it. Like I don't know if it's going to be, you know, in Ice Ribbon or in Tokyo Joshi Pro. It might be in uh, Wave. It might be in Marvelous. Like, um, but we'll see. There's going to be somebody. Somebody's going to have to, you know, through all this stuff has to, you know, figure this out. Caleb Ball, one host of Grave Consequences. How big is Wardlow's dick? Why is he always weird like this, man? It's time to zoom. Caleb Baldwin, don't you ever, and I mean ever, disrespect this goddamn show again with one of those questions. That's it. Um, <clears throat> Rambone Slam Pig. Uh, he says, do you think Tony Khan deciding to book ROH is a mistake due to stretching himself too thin or has his excellent track record with AEW demonstrated that he's the best choice for the job despite his other commitments? And he said, as a follow up, do you think ROH is being is still being positioned to run as a super indie like an East Coast PWG or has the acquisition made that an unlikely model going forward? Well, one question at a time. Uh, the first one, do I think he's stretching himself? Uh, too thin, potentially, but um, if anybody's you know. gonna be able to do it, it's gonna be him. Him with some help, yeah. Um, like I, I don't, I don't know who else like he's gonna hand that to. So, oh, I, I no, 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 I, I didn't mean like him, uh, his help necessarily being anybody else. Just you know. <laughs> anyway, um. <laughs> So he says, do you think ROH is still being positioned to run as a super indie like an East Coast PWG or has the acquisition made that an unlikely model going forward? I think it would be unlikely. I think it's going to run much more like a traditional uh, company at this point. And I think they're going to have AEW kind of augment some of the stuff. And he said he's still going to be looking for people to sign to ROH too. So um, whether people, you know, they can't use an AEW and or like they don't want to use an AEW, they can put them in ROH. And I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting. For my personal selfish benefit, I would like it to be a super indie or just matches, bell rings, bell rings, bell rings, bell rings, right? Um, but given that he bought it, I imagine he wants to run another promotion, a second promotion. Right? Like, if he just wanted to run a, a super indie, he could run it. He he could he could have not bought Ring of Honor. Or he, he could have or he, he could have like or backdoor or finance just, somebody. Or he could have only just like bought his tape library and and and, and bought the IP <clears> and left it alone, and ran you know Ring of Honor or sorry uh, AW Super Shows on the weekend in other cities and smaller venues if he wanted to. Yeah, I I think it was like kind of like what I was saying before. It's like you can do matches you don't necessarily want to do in AEW in ROH. Um, whether it's like somewhere like you want to bring the Bri- you don't want to bring the Briscoes in AEW, so you know you have FTR go to ROH and fight them, shit like that. Or you know we want to give you know a young guy like twenty five minutes in a main event or something that we don't necessarily want to waste ratings time on. Put them in ROH different stuff like that. So that's what I'd expect. Yeah, that that wouldn't be a bad idea at all. At Kroger, we believe fresh means holding our produce to a higher standard. That's why we do up to a 27-point inspection on our produce. Like for citrus, we check for things like scarring and sunburn. Yep, oranges can sunburn. And we'll make sure you never see it. In fact, we only allow the best oranges, lemons, and grapefruits to reach our shelves. Because when it comes to fresh for everyone, we believe the juice is worth the squeeze. Kroger, fresh for everyone. 
Yep. So besides that, I guess we should talk about AW New Year's Dash, as I'm calling it unofficially. Uh, Hell, Angus. <clears throat> yo, I, I I loved it. It was like things, stuff, 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 stuff kept happening. You know, in a way, it, I don't mean this in an insulting way. You know, like some of those Russo uh, Nitros and Raws where it'd be like, there'd be so <laughs> much shit that happened that you're just like, why is this wrestling match even going on? Who cares? In a way, in a way, given that there was a sick, you know, because they did the seven minute title or, you know, world title match. Uh, did he put in a six match? You okay? Went down the wrong side. And then I saw Edge has new music and it sucks. Oh, man. Okay. So, bro, when he came out, he's still in dark light, and there was a light shining at him. I thought it was <sighs> Cody, and then Edge walked out. I, was, I rolled my eyes. I was like, all right, back to back to focusing on this. I don't care. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bro. <laughs> like, Edge, bro. Cringe. Well, the cringe master. Well, you know, it's just like, I wasn't here. I, was, I wasn't. I don't have this on for any reason other than to make sure that, you know, you know. <clears throat> Yeah. I, you know, I'm keeping live updates right now to make sure this motherfucker lands where he's supposed to land. But uh, anyway, um, yeah. So I, I, uh, what were we talking about just now? Um, AW New Year's that. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it just felt like one of those Russo shows where it's like <clears throat> not necessarily in a bad way. The show was this show was good as hell, but it's like it felt like there was may have been like one or two things that could have been cut to give things more time to where it didn't feel like it was just like uh sensory overload of, of things. Uh, Cause you know, AEW does a really good job of normally of like just taking its time. But like they, it felt like they were like, yeah, we're going to try and fit one and a half shows into this, into two hours we got here. Like it'd been cool if there were no commercials. This show would have felt, this show would have been appropriate. It had there been, you know, um, no commercials, but it is what it is. Uh, and, um, so where do you want to start with this? Because there's a lot of stuff. I guess at the beginning. Um, okay. <clears throat> so Eddie Kingston comes out, or Jericho comes out, and he got a great reception and thinks that Sunday was one of the best nights of his career, even though he lost. Thinks it's one of the best matches of his career, arguably the best of his time in AEW. He thanked Eddie Kingston for bringing out a side of him he thought was gone. <clears throat> he said, he didn't live up to his words after the match, and his word is everything. Chris said he was frustrated, and the fans were chanting, like, shake his hand. Uh, Chris said Eddie deserved respect, and he has it, and he called Kingston out. And all this was being played, like, really straight. And um, he – he Eddie came out and, you know, to- said they're going to get real deep. Eddie then cuts a fucking amazing promo. Um, he was like – Says, you know, Friday before was the biggest match of his career. He didn't want to show up. He wanted uh, to go out drinking. His Jericho had gotten his head. Someone tried to do the what chant to him, and he just flat out destroyed the what chant. Not in a, like, clever response way like The Undertaker once did. This was like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? Essentially, like, I'm trying to tell y'all some real shit right now, and you're trying to fuck around being an asshole. And then, like... They stopped. It, it was like the sign of like ultimate respect. Eddie said uh, four people on Saturday at the meet and greet told him, you know, that they didn't commit suicide because of him. And that's why he showed up from the Players Tribune. So after a match, he went to his hotel room and cried because he wanted to make those people from the Fan Fest proud. He got emotional and says, you know, he hope he did that. Kingston told Jericho that the handshake wasn't for Kingston. It actually was for Jericho. And that sounds like Chris Jericho problem. Like there's something that he got to deal with. And then, it, you know, Eddie said, you know, he dragged out the man that he looked up to from Japan. That was him showing his, his respect. But Jericho proved that he's still the man. He's still number one. But Kingston still has questions if that's enough to fill the hole where he doesn't want to res- just show respect to the young guys. Jericho said everything Eddie said was right. Jericho tells Eddie he has his undying respect. He thanks him for giving him respect. And he offers to shake his hand. And then they shake hands. And then it's like. Well, that was really nice. Like, I was like, okay, cool. You know, and then 2.0 and Daniel Garcia started running out to the ring. And then they jumped on Eddie and Jericho a lot more on Eddie. And then Santana and Ortiz hit the ring and started clearing house. And they had baseball bats in their hand. Uh, They had a hold of Daniel Garcia and Jericho was going to take a crack at him. Then all of a sudden, 
Jericho hits Santana and Ortiz with the bat. And it is on, and it's a swerve, and I'm like, oh, my God, this fucker got me again. Um, And I I didn't see this coming, and then I started, like, putting two and two together, and it was like, oh, my God, he's been luring us to to fucking sleep for weeks. Like, all the stuff, like, playing kind of a heel in the Kingston role, you know, uh, in the lead-up to the feud, getting back in shape. And, and all this other stuff. And I'm like, oh, my God, is he about to, like, get some type of, like, summertime push or whatever is about to happen? Like, you know, that 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 the Randy Orton theory of getting in shape when you're about to get a run or whatever. He And then they put over um, he put over Santana before he put over fucking Kingston. And it was like, oh, that was him essentially finishing up as a baby face. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's what happened. And then Hager runs out and he starts screaming at Jericho. He suddenly realizes, oh, shit, I don't want to be away from Jericho <laughs> because I'll fucking sink. And then he's like, well, I might as well whoop the ass, too. You know, and then they start, whoop, you know, he started whooping everybody's ass. So, so I um, like I like how you have uh, how you how you just filled in that K-Flave explanation on the spot for why he did that. Not not that like this is actually real life. This is a K-Fabe. He came yes. up and was like, what the fuck, bro? What about us? Never mind. I'm going with the money. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> we'll figure it out later, you know. <laughs> but then Jericho hit Kingston in the head with the bat, and then Hager damn near fucking killed Kingston. Like, he didn't have him, and they had to readjust him. I thought Eddie Kingston was going to fucking die bruh, from this powerbomb. They, bruh, he went up for the powerbomb on the apron for the uh, for a powerbomb off the apron through the table on the on the floor, uh, laid on the, opened up on the floor, and like he couldn't get up, so then like uh, I don't know, uh, two point oh or Dan Garcia or Jericho, whoever it was, got it was Jericho. They, they both got each other's legs, so he helped anchor to get Kingston all the way up to throw him. <laughs> and then when he threw him, he still landed hot at a high angle on his fucking neck. It's like y- y'all did that to make it safer, but like nah, it was still just as bad as it would have been. And he just let him the fuck go. <laughs> <laughs> like so, Friday night, boy, it was a dangerous night to wrestle on television on Friday, boy. It really was. So, so um, Jericho got on the. We, we start seeing 2.0 and Hager and Jericho and Garcia, and then I'm like, they're like, wow, the inner circle's done, and it has been replaced with the Jericho Appreciation Society, and that's entertainment. I just got to say, I've been the Jericho Appreciation Society for a long time. So, um, thanks. You know that that's kind of my my deal. Oh, it, it's cool, Chris. If you, you want to take the gimmick, fine, fine. You know you're giving a lot to us, so you can take as well. So um, I, I saw the, the the unit, and I'm seeing Jericho is going to be a heel now. I think he's going to change Judas. Like I think he's going to do it, and he's going to change to another Fozzy song just for the heat. Jericho's someone that you know. I think everyone's going to get what they want now. They've, they've wanted Proud and Powerful to be away from Jericho because it was supposedly hurting them. And I think I, I don't know if I've addressed this on the show, um, but I did it in the group chat to, to lay out a specific point about this whole thing with, with that. I'm like, that's the storyline. That's not the reality. Because if Private P- or PMP wasn't with Jericho all this time, where would they have been? They will not have been main eventing a pay per view, that's for sure. Right. Um, they they would have, not have been like you know, like in one of the most important matches of the year last year in Blood and Gus, that's for sure. Right. Um, I also think like you know, I, people are like they they look at everything through the prism of the championships, right? And so I started going through it literally. I was like, all right, could you have made them the first AW Tag Team Champions? No, because they had the whole inner circle and the elite thing popping off. And that was kind of in its own world. That didn't need the belts intertwined with it. So the belts were somewhere else. Kenny and Hangman was always going to happen. If you want to give them FTR's title reign, right? Three months or whatever. Fans weren't, fans weren't clamoring for that. Fans were clamoring for FTR versus Young Bucks. Correct. So FTR and Young Bucks was kind of going to happen there. I think... Even at the time, if PMP was the champions, that doesn't change things for them right now. 
right now they still have a story they still have kind of something to go for right now rather than hey your reign has already either happened like you know and, and also there were right. no fans around right like they, they still not have... together anymore right right like you like, want to be the first champions okay fine they're not together anymore in theory right. Right. So, like, they still have a reason to kind of be together, be around, and still, they're still on the incline, kind of. Right. So, like, I, I think people have, they've really, like, taken the storyline to heart and then, like, let their, their Jericho hate really kind of just blind them to the fact that he was the one that was holding them up and then losing to them at the end or whatever to, to really put them over. And, he was the reason that they would, if there was uh, a case where they weren't being protected po- politically, like if Jericho was not there, they have no protection at all. Yep. So I don't get it. Um, besides I don't that, get it I didn't even, I didn't even hear about this. Uh, yeah. But, but like, let's just, this is a common held thing. That let's, just, I, let's, I, be, I let's be real. Right. You want to do the one, do the Santana and Ortiz or tag team division game. We, we can do it. Do you have a list of the division? I do not have a list, but I have it off the top of my head. Okay. Let, let's do it. All right. Red Dragon or, or Santana and Ortiz? Red Dragon. FTR. I think that's a push. I, I Given what but, we've seen, I go with FTR. Yeah. yeah well, I, um, I will say, I'll say FTR has a higher ceiling against low teams, and they kind of – they may have more to offer as opponents than – PMP does to some of the other teams. Okay, the Young Bucks. The Bucks. Jurassic Express. Jurassic Express. Moxley in Moxley in in, in uh, Danielson. Uh, for the sake of this argument, I'll take Moxley and Danielson. So we that's five already right there. Yep. They're they're a very good tag team. I enjoy watching them. I wish they, I wish I saw them more, to be honest. But this is a loaded division. Like, did I say Lucha Bros yet? No, you did not. Lucha Bros. Yeah, I'll take Lucha I'm Bro. sorry. Any combination of Death Triangle. I'll take that. Yeah, all three of those teams. Like, think about it as like the 80s WWF. Like, they had all those fucking teams, right? And it was like one team was going to be the champions, the next team was going to be the champions, and somebody might not get it, like the Rockers or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... You know, I think everyone wants everyone to have a turn with it. And I think the cool thing is their turn still might come. Right. Um, and, like, don't take it me as saying, like, yo, they're not good enough to be the champions because right. they, they're clearly good enough they're to be the champions. They're clearly good enough. There's every, but the thing is this. In a promotion. You claimed are way more over than them. In a promotion where, in a promotion that is, uh, that is um, adequately uh, talented, you want or you're going to have situations where it's like that, right? Like think how we talk about this line of, of next AEW world champions, right? Like there's like 20 guys are talented or close to 20 guys are talented to be a world champion in, in, in AEW from a singles perspective. Not all 20 of them are going to be fucking champion. We just started this show talking about Scott Hall. Right. Right. (laughs) So like, and that's going to be the, that's the case with this division. Like, um, it it it's a it's a good problem if you are well prepared, right? Because you're always going to have something uh, worthwhile. And also, like this is a this is a fan base that is aware of everybody's talent, so like they're okay with anybody being the champion because there's not going to be any like general hall champions, right? It's very mm-hmm. similar to that that 2000, you know that that like um 2000. Like 18, 2019 NXT, where it's like there were six different guys that could have been world champion. No, I would have bad an eye. Um, so yeah, like I, I'm, I'm. If if he doesn't if he doesn't get it, he doesn't get it. Or if they don't get it, they don't get it. But um, I think they will. But like the main thing is like having something to do. And right now with this, they have something to do, and they're going to be on TV, and people are going to care about them, and they're going to have really good matches. And right, then like, when they have those really good matches, eventually, that's when we, to... right. Man, patience, <sighs> patience. Like listen, we just listen to Adam One Cole Nation thing, Radio the now. Adam Cole thing just happened last year. Listen to One Nation Radio now. Believe us when it happens. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, so 
quick thoughts on on the Jericho Appreciation Society, like as a group. I know you weren't thrilled uh, with with this pairing oh here. My God, I, I, I may have some some counter thoughts to think about here. Like <sighs> Jericho had Inner Circle, and they were a top faction. This is not a top faction in AEW as currently constructed. <laughs> Um, it's just not. They 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 have Jericho, they have Dan Garcia, and they have 2.0, and they have Hager. I mean, I you know, I if this was the S, if this was SC football, they're not Alabama or Georgia. They're more of a Florida right now. I think, uh, and this is gonna go. This is gonna be a compliment to. Uh, P and P, I would say, if they were staying kind of as currently constructed, like say the inner circle was just going to turn back again, and they they were going to keep them instead of two point oh. Let's just say that mm-hmm. I think they would be overqualified to be like the kind of goons now behind Jericho doing that, uh, doing what two point oh is going to do. Like as far as like just like. I think the detractors would say the inner circle was built to prop up Chris Jericho. This is built to prop up Chris Jericho. It's literally called the Jericho Appreciation Society. I, I don't know if this is propping up Jericho. I think this is going to hurt Jericho. Hmm. Like, who, what faction do you want to see them face where they're not like all eating pins, or not Jericho won't be eating pins, but them other guys will be eating pins. Well, I'm, well, I think with 2.0, they are like in in the comment section. Solo Dome with 2.0 or Kevin Owens' guys. They're all Canadians. Jericho's kind of familiar with those guys. I think they're going to be great shit eaters, personally. Um, and I don't think Santana and Ortiz would be shit eaters. So um, I don't really have an, an issue with the group. Like Garcia's. I- probably ahead of where Sammy was at the time when Inner Circle was formed. Hager is a wash at this point. Um, I do not think that Dan Garcia is ahead of Sammy Guevara um, at that time. Like, I... I, I I, I think they're to, I think they're different. I, I get this. I get the 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 call for comparison, but I think they're different. Like I don't think obviously the killer thing is out there, but like I don't think that Dan Garcia is like. And they and they put and they put him in a shit ton of main. That's events what I'm saying. That's already. what I mean. Like he, he's but, had like six or eight months to like establish himself on TV before going right, into the group. Right. That, but that's my point. Plucked. Like he's been around for six or something months. Like and no one's giving a fuck. They're, they're I don't mean in no bad ways. He's super talented. I enjoy why I enjoy the hell I was watching his wrestling, right? But that's me as a that's me as a as a be in my pure old nerdness. That's not that's not about like what happens for crowds like before the bell rings with him. Once the bell rings, he's fine. Before the bell, when he comes out, no one cares. Yeah. Um and, and don't get us wrong, I think Sammy's like better, but just from the point of like, yo, all right, this person's been established and he's kind of he's he's been there with Moxley, he's been there with Punk. He's he, they put him in a lot of big spots. Kings did like, you know. I commend him for trying. I just don't think yeah. it worked. Yeah. We'll see. Um, I think I think that I think that this I think this, whatever this is, is gonna work out better than them trying to put him in uh, in rampage main events over and over and over for like the last six months. <laughs> <laughs> or not six months, but like five months, whatever you want to call it. I, I think it's funny, like Jericho kind of swooped on, you know, behind the scenes. He swooped on putting grabbing Daniel Garcia, you know, away, away from, from away from uh, Daniel Cena Moxley and yeah, you know, like, and, let and me Regal. let me go ahead and, and do and grab that, you know, and, and you know, hook it up. But um, so we had a uh, Heyman Page versus Dante Martin in the AEW World Title match. I like this match. It was very short. I wish they went longer, but um, yeah, man, Dante Martin has had a had a great run since his brother's been out. It all kind of has culminated here and get him getting this title shot. Um, I wish it was longer. I wish they kind of did more with it, uh, but ended up doing. Uh, like, hey, man, ended up getting him out of there with with the uh, buckshot and. 
Johnson Martin did a whole bunch of cool shit. And then Hangman hey kind of put him over heavy afterward into leading to Adam Cole coming out. Yeah, I I don't know why this was a title match. If he's going to beat him in seven minutes, why is it a title match? Because he was on top of the rankings? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, like, if you're going to do a title match, if you're going to do a title match, do a title match. And, like, I don't necessarily, I don't, you know, when it first happened, I was like, wait, I don't know when this match was announced, but it seemed like it just happened, like, they announced they it. They pulled a out of thin air. They announced not, it a not a thin air, but like they announced it like like seemingly at short notice, whatever else. Like, um, so along with the the the, t- the world tag titles, so I was like, okay, all right, so we're gonna have three title matches uh three days after the pay-per-view with, with all those matches being defended. Like w- like what did like did did these did these champions piss off the piss off the booker? Like what what happened here? Um but um yeah, I just, uh, I, I, you know, once you get to, you know, like, people getting ups- or not upset, people, like, you know, um, talking about Regal, like, going over on time for a, what was, like, a five-minute or less than six-minute promo is, like, y'all y'all did maybe one or two things too many on this show. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, I, I just wished it, like, if I, like, the Dante Martin title match challenge that where he loses, like, in my mind isn't seven minutes it's like 15 minutes and it like it it more fits like what happened with jungle boy in in omega not this seven minute thing but so you know got he'll, he'll probably get another he'll probably get another defense eventually the real so, so said these title matches remind me of brett's mid-90s title reign it's cool bruce says i'd rather they didn't have hangman wrestling on tv too much keep them from pay-per-view to make them feel special they could have had any other seven minute match here i disagree because I, I feel like hangman's tv presence is like needing a shot in the arm like i think he is someone that has taken these long gaps of time not being on television already yep and that's that may be hurting him in some people's eyes um and that's why I didn't mind, you know, the match here. So, uh, like, they need to start, like, establishing him stronger. Like, he needs to not be overshadowed, I think, anymore. I agree. Um, they – Becky just pilmanized uh, – or not pilmanized, but uh, put uh, Bianca's head in the in an open chair and then ran her into the steps. So – or not the steps, but into the post. So, um Damn, you know, some some evil does every match. A, de- a decade ago, you know, a decade ago, like she ain't, she might not make it to WrestleMania. She'll probably wrestle in two weeks, or wrestle next week. But you know, we'll see. Like they uh, WWE like is killed pilmanizing or, or next. You know, uh, for me, like when they did that Ronda shit at Survivor 2019, like Charlotte pilmanized her, and then like, she literally wrestled and won the next night. It's like. Yeah. What? Like, anyway, uh, what were we talking about? We were talking about um, Hangman's kind of TV presence. Yeah, and then, I don't. Like, I don't mind him having TV. Yeah, yeah. I don't have. I don't mind having TV matches, but like, if you're going to do a title match, have a real title match. If not, just don't make it a title match. And if you're going to make it a title match, make it like a 15 minute, 13 minute deal. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't. Obviously, it's cool to get Dante Martin in a in a title position, but like the part is like people he's an under he's a uh, underdog babyface. Like being in seven minutes doesn't really the under I understand I understand underdog. Oh my god! Um, they just show footage of uh, Ronda in the ring, like working out with uh, Kurt Angle and her punches. Those are some of the worst punches I ever saw her throw. Her throw. Not the worst punch I ever saw. It's one of the worst punches I ever saw her throw, which is already <laughs> bottom tier at times. Um, I'm sorry. I keep getting distracted by this fucking TV. What were, what were we talking about again? Um, Adam Cole comes out and says yeah. like a bunch of ridiculous shit. Yeah, yeah, I, I want to. He's like, I want to. I want to rematch. I will visually be champion, but I don't want to match with you. I want a triple. I want to. I want a, a trios match. All right. So it looks like I think another Battle of the Bells is on the calendar in April. Um, so this may be, you know, a rematch on that. Uh, if I had to guess, I think that um, 
Cole said a lot of ridiculous shit about Paige getting lucky because Paige whooped his country ass oh, like, yeah, in this yeah. match, like, Cole, bro. Cole, Cole gave him everything. Yeah, Cole, like, Cole made him like a fucking world beater like, throughout that entire match. Like, obviously, he's saying that to say it. Um, But, yeah, like, make no mistake. Like, they're... Like, this whole entire feud with Adam Cole has been to, like, make make Adam Page, like, the the a fucking cowboy, literally. Like, he he may as well come down here, come down this bitch every single week with a hat on the way he was whooping ass. <laughs> like, they may as well, they may as well name, him, may, name him the sheriff of his town. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said, get ready for, like, you know, like I feel like he's going to have this bitch all year. Like, it's going to line him up, knock him down. Do you remember... Um, was it two weeks ago? Like there was a there was a moment where like it he laid out every single um all of undisputed all of them one of, like piece by piece run in throw you out run in throw you out run in throw you out I don't care if you're the next pay per view challenger I don't give a fuck throwing you out too like he he whooped like he 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 whooped all their asses like yeah they're pushing him like big big I like it I like it I don't mind it at all I don't mind it at all but just like for, don't make no mistake. Don't make no mistake. Uh, like if this was another company uh, pushing a baby face this well or pushing it this hard, they would have rejected. It. They would have peeped in. They would have rejected it. They, like obviously, there's no suffering sacrifice going on, no nonsense like that. But if there had been any slip up and they did, and then they continue to do this, people would have already been like, "Okay, I'm out. I'm not doing this. We see what's happening. Wrap this up. Yeah, change it. <laughs> change it." They would have people would have, would have been demanding some alterations by the, by now. So uh, up next we have Brian Nelson and John Moxley against the Work Horsemen. Uh, they beat the fuck out of these guys and whatever. <laughs> uh, it was their JD name is Drake. actually Work Horsemen, or you this is a, a, that's a, that's their name, I oh, guess okay. from from Evolve. So it was Anthony Henry and JD Drake. Well, they got worked that for sure. Yeah, you know, um, got fucked up. Nelson and Moxley won. <clears throat> yeah. Regal jumps in. Uh, he told Shivani he didn't think they'd be doing this again. 29 years after they first worked together, Regal said he made his own life hard, both in and out the ring. Uh, he knows he's not long for his life due to too many empty bottles and broken hearts. Regal then like kind of started crying a little bit, and uh, or it looked like he was about to cry. And he thanks Tony for helping him in the past. He snapped out of it and said he's no longer required from his old job, and then he checked out of his old job. But then someone told him Brian Danielson mentioned him on Dynamite. It got him interested, so he went to watch and found out he'd be fighting Moxley. Uh, Regal says the, the reason people know him now is because of Brian, as his name was always mentioned alongside of him. Uh, Regal says that if someone wants to work hard, he'll make them a better wrestler. Uh, first thing he'll do is sit them down and tell them what not to do. And then he started pointing at Brian and said, this is the perfect wrestler. And they did the wide zoom out. And it was a real emotional moment there. Uh, and he was pointing at Brian and then uh, Regal said there was a time he trained with a group of wrestlers, but he would stay and Brian would keep working. Regal sent him places and Brian became the wrestler that he should have been uh, because he didn't have the problems that Regal did. Uh, William Regal said he had seen enough on Sunday as to what this could this younger generation have than these two. What better could this younger generation have than these two men? Uh, Regal says that's why they're together. He said, oh, also, I got Moxley, we've been through hell together, by the way. And then <laughs> he warns anyone who steps in the ring with him, they will not like the outcome. You'll step up or get stepped on. Yeah. Um, I know he went a couple places and meandered a little bit, uh, but I, I really enjoyed the promo. And maybe I'm maybe it's because I'm soft on Regal because I I, I, I I love Regal. Um, he's one of my favorite non-wrestlers of the last 20 years. Um, so, so maybe I'm just being, un, I'm, I'm being biased on it, but like, I enjoyed the content of the, of the promo and I enjoyed most of the promo. I, I do agree that he did, you know, go, uh, outstay his welcome a little bit, but like the general sentiment was, I thought was great. Um, and yeah, like I, I also enjoyed like him calling, uh, Danielson the perfect wrestler. Like when he said this shit, I was like, kinda, he, he kinda, he kinda is the perfect textbook wrestler. Like, you know, like, um, this week. In the social suplex thread, Floyd started asking us about like what we thought about Bret Hart historically, or our opinions of where he stands historically. And like, um, and I, I said like, if you're gonna break it down in like categories, as far as like what you think of like him, and I was talking about just as an in ring performer. I, didn't, I like I'm not, I'm not talking about promos, or whatever else. That's different discussion. But 
like for me, if you break matches down as like categories of like we're not we're not we're not hurting each other, we're not doing anything, no chops, light very light wrestling or whatever else. And we're in that category of like best light light uh light impact striking wrestlers or whatever else. And like the only thing you really gotta worry about is like, you know, bumping um and not doing crazy bumps. Like I think Brett is I mean, Brett might be the best ever at that. Um and then, uh, you know, as far as other categories where it's like, it goes, it ranges from like, all right, we're doing chops to we finna, you know, we might be, you know, might be some high angle, uh, you know, stuff. And then it might be like, all right, you know, we hope that no one, we hope everyone makes it home safe. Like those are different categories. But I think, I think in that category of like light, I think, he, I think he might be the best that I've ever seen. But, uh, but yeah, like, um, like when it comes to Danielson, like, I just think he's, I think he's, like, along with Brett, like, I just think everything he does is, like, technically perfect. So, you know, when he when he said that, it, it was like, you can make that argument. You can make that argument if you want to. It depends on your preference and taste for wrestling, but, like, I don't ever see, I don't recall ever seeing, like, Daniel since last Daniel Bryan do something that was like, what the fuck is he doing, or this was dangerous, or extremely dangerous, or this looks, this didn't look good. He, I just think he's, I think, I think he's always been <clears throat> just excellent. I'm kind of concerned about his character. Uh, Regal or or Danielson? Danielson. Because, like, inside of... He's been in AW since... September. August? Or September. September. Like early so September, he, yeah. he had the short babyface run, and mm-hmm. then now he's like... He was a heel, or leaning into the heel stuff with Hangman, and then now he's seemingly in a tag team as a heel... I don't, I don't know, man. It, it, it's, it feels a little weird. Like, what I don't do know. You mean? Like, I don't know if like, have, have they really got it? Have they moved on from being the top guys? What you're asking? No, not that. But like, I think, like, I feel like he should be, I like him better as a baby face personally. Uh, obviously he can't be a baby face because he just lost the baby face champion and it, it doesn't, Obviously, you got to do something different once you do that, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't know if I necessarily want to boo him like this. <laughs> it, it, it's weird, and I, I think his, I don't know. It, don't I, I feel like it's, I feel like it's I... something to the the kind of kind of watch because, like, depending on who they put him in there with, it's going to be like, huh? Like, and and I feel like it's a less lesser version than what he could have been. But. I don't disagree, but I mean they they were given a shitty situation with the Mossy thing. Mm-hmm. They weren't planning to turn him hill. It just they had to they had to make him they had to have him be a dick so that people wouldn't just completely mm-hmm. like t- you know shit on Hangman, which goes back to what we talked what we were talking about earlier with Hangman. Like if you don't think folks are they're they're behind him, you're crazy. All yeah. this is for him. Not I don't mean in no bad way, but it's like because he's doing he's knocking out the park, but like. This is this is this is a top down approach. Like this is all like this is all around like uh I remember uh Gary Popovich talking about like the success of the Spurs and he's like we run the offense through Tim Duncan. The secret success we run the offense through Tim Duncan, and then we also run the defense through Tim Duncan. They're running mm-hmm. all this shit through Hangman. <laughs> and then everything else is everybody has to figure out how to fit in after that right now with no, with no yeah. Kenny Omega. And as far as the at top of the singles uh divisions. So like, yeah, like they they didn't want to risk anything with with Hangman um, with, with Daniels since they turned Daniels and Hill. Daniels didn't, don't care. He could do it. Like if he's gonna be a dick, and if you cheer him, he don't care. If and if you boo him, that's what was that's what he wants. Uh, for right now, that's a job. Um, you know, like, but yeah, I mean, I, I think right now with 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 Hangman and CM Punk. I don't think they're like who's the number three babyface. Like, do they really? Is there really a need for a number three babyface right now? In yeah. that way, like, what you say yeah. is Kingston right now? I, I maybe Moxley, like, because Moxley's not a heel, so like, I don't know. Like, I, he might, he to, you're right. For he right now, he's side. still a babyface, and then like, but it's in question, and he's being tempted right now. Right, and I guess Kingston would probably be the other one, and then Wardlow's there too. So yeah, like, no, so I, some... I, yeah, so I don't think they're like hurting. Like they, I think they're good on the babyface side. I think that I think the stuff with WWE or with, with uh, Danielson at the time in um, in WWE was like, yo, y'all can make babyface say y'all lives, and y'all had one literally 
come out of retirement, come out of the out of the cryogenic chamber or the or the uh, sorry the hyperbaric chamber to to come save y'all and y'all said no. Like they, they I mean they fucked this up with Roman Reigns too. They had a motherfucker beat cancer and they still and they still figured out how to not keep him hot. So I'm with you. I'm with you. I, but I think I think given that they're actually good at making baby faces and and you know don't have the same type of baggage as uh with booking and distrust with their fan base that they that they don't they don't have those same concerns or they don't you know or it's not as toxic of a situation. Right. Uh then we had a short pack and we'll we'll you to match. Pack fucked them up. Yeah. Don't really got much on this. I didn't pay attention to this at all. Um then the color cam went back and uh in that promo before Cole had said, you know, he was going to be teaming with somebody that knows Hangman hey, better than himself. They're masters of super kicks. They're all this other shit. It's kind of setting it up like it's going to be the Bucks. And obviously, it is going to be the Bucks until Adam Cole gets his feelings hurt. Um, <laughs> so they, um, uh, he said he knows Sunday wasn't the best night for any of them. And then Matt Jackson questioned Red Dragon. They began arguing. Cole told him to stop next week. They'll change things up. He says he has the perfect partners and they're two of his very best friends. And then Matt was like, nah, we don't want to do this shit. And then Cole was like, oh, uh, well, we're not picking you anyway. And yeah. Of course, you, yeah, you know, sure, sure you are. All right. <laughs> notorious, notorious uh, super kicker, uh, Bobby Fish. Right. So he said he was picking Kyle and Bobby and they walked away. So um, after that, FTR breaks up with Tully Blanchard. The the pinnacle is falling apart. Um, what was that about? It begins here. I have no idea. Um, they were off the pay-per-view. What were they of upset about? I don't even know what they were upset about. Said wrestling was his first love and he tries to call out Red Dragon and then Tully cut him off and says, like, the, um, you know, he was brought here. Oh, well, Red Dragon eliminated them from the battle royal the week before and like snuck behind them or whatever so dax was pissed off about that it was like yo why are you trying to go after red dragon okay i figured it out yeah why are you trying to go after red dragon it's about the fucking belts fuck that and then they argued what it was about really and cash Wheeler said this is about family and blanchard isn't that and they fired him so but what does it being about family have to do <clears throat> with you wanting to fight red dragon or throwing you for throwing him over the tight or throwing him over to the top like you want your vengeance because they cross you for the belt, so it'll still, in a way, still be about the belts. I don't like what. Is, what does family have to do? With? Maybe I'm just missing. There's something I feel like I'm missing here. Like is something happened on like one of these off non paper on one of these you know some no, shows. It, it, it's it's directly from the Battle Royal. Like that's why they would call out Red Dragon. But um, <clears throat> yeah, okay. I don't I don't know. Um, so okay. the AH, AHFO were in the ring, and this is a, a great. When they put they put the wheels in motion for this whole segment, when they gave the voting power to, um, you know, uh, Isaiah and, and Mark Quinn at the like, beginning, this was, at yep, the beginning, this, was all, this is masterful. Did you like? Listen to, did you listen to Observer Radio? <laughs> nah. When they were talking about this, like the day at or the night after, like D- don't don't tell me they were dumbfounded by this. They because- completely forgot about the voting power thing. What the f- They completely forgot about that happening, so they were confused. They were like flabbergasted as a why. Listen to One Nation Radio, y'all. They just forgot. They just forgot. And I was like, like this, oh, this is why. Okay. It, was, it was like, yo, they're going to eventually outvote him, and then that's how Jeff fucking comes in the promotion. Like, anyone could, I, I, I think anyone at, at could the time, see this. I wasn't At the time, I wasn't thinking about Jeff, but I was like, oh, yeah, they're going to fuck him over, especially because, like, they, you know, Matt had been fucking him over for, for pay for since the beginning. So, of course, they are going to, you know, you know, screw them. I didn't know this was going to turn into like now we're you know we're screwing the the, the the guy that's been screwing me, and now we're now the guy that's been conning us is now the baby face. I didn't, I would never thought that was going to happen, but apparently it's because Jeff Hardy. You know, none sticks to Jeff Hardy ever. Um, so except for contact Andrade, high. Matt, yeah, Matt says he wanted to make things right, but Andrade wants to fire him. Uh, Andrade asks where Matt's suit is. He said when he puts on the suit, he transforms into an asshole. And Andrade knows what all, that's all about, and Jose certainly does. Uh, he said he wants to make this right, and then Andrade says he wants to take a vote. Uh, some about these Lij members and you know votes. Votes. Um, so <laughs> Matt says that private party will never vote him out. Essentially, sealing. His yeah, yeah, face. and and, and it, I don't know. At one point, Andrade <laughs> said that you pulled up his face. His, you know, one of my favorite lines he has. Okay, how you know? How you know? How you know? Yeah, that's like. That's his thing. I like that. I don't know. I didn't know that was his thing, but I, but I enjoy him saying it every time. All right, continue. Yep. Sorry. 
So private party ended up turning against him, giving him a thumbs down yep. and behind his back. And Andrade says, you always got to watch your back. And then Matt turned around and saw them thumbs. Then they beat his country ass after that. And uh, all the members getting their shots. And Butcher and the Blade are just hanging out there, just fucking hilarious. This man, Butcher, walks to the ring eating a pork chop. Blade I didn't like, see that. <laughs> bro, it's fucking hilarious. Uh, like, so, someone put it on Twitter. It was like, yeah, that man walked out and had a whole pork chop eating it by hand. Remember a fried pork eating, chop? Yeah, remember how Biggie was eating that steak one time next in front to, of uh, Danielson? Yes, yes. it, it kind of looked Back like stage, the same shit, was, bro. I think I got to give it on my phone somewhere. Yeah. Oh man! So they uh, and Blade is sitting there all covered up. Essentially, only his eyes are showing. This shit is fucking hilarious. right because he got the yeah. Yes. Um. <clears throat> then the, the whole group, you know, beat the hell out of Matt. Everybody took turns on him. Dry to give him the big boot. Then Darby and Sting came out. We didn't talk about the six man tag last week, James. Yeah, we, we have yeah. to. Yeah. Sting is an absolute fucking madman. Sting never misses in this promotion. Sammy Guevara is a fucking lunatic. Uh, so is Idea Cassidy. I love that match. That shit was insane in person. It was just like. What the fuck will happen next? Yeah, the two I stunts I thought it. in the match I thought were great. Um, as far as the match, I at that time I was, I have to go back and watch it. But I don't know, but like, I, I, but I thought like the the freaking Spanish fly off the top of the tunnel through the table, yes, on top of the, um, you know, the L- LED, uh, you know, uh, ramp. I thought that was insane. I thought like I I really at point thought that like uh, Isaiah Cassidy was fucked up bad. Um, but uh, I guess not. Um, the dive uh, from Sting. Um, wow, man! Like if he had told me that, like Sting, obviously Sting don't miss. But if he had told me that Sting would just like become, you know, a backyarder all of a sudden in in year, you know, thirty something, I wouldn't have believed you. I've been like, why? Why would he do that? But. Bro, I have uh, Darby. Enjoyed. Darby's a bad influence. Darby, the the youth is influencing the old. Rich, it's happening backwards right now. Yep. This is the most it, I've it liked things. It, this it, is it, the most I've liked things since WCW. It it is funny though. Like Darby, you know, everybody does. You know, uh, it's Sammy Spanish Fly yep. off the, off the off the ramp. Sting dive through the double or uh, double stacked uh, tables through on dry day. And then Matt Hardy, sorry ass, he <laughs> he get the finish is top rope coffin drop. He moves away from the coffin drop and makes and, and look from our angle. I thought I thought that Darby completely fucking missed him and never even touch him. I couldn't even tell. And then apparently I found out after that like his head hit his hip. I was like, great, thanks, Matt. And then Matt got pinned, uh, which is like okay. JML whatever. says Sting became New Jack in twenty twenty two. Oh my god, I love it. The thing is, Sting's not high on cocaine it. while doing this. He's doing this off of just adrenaline. This is wild. Speaking of cocaine, Jeff Hardy uh, then returned. Never mind. Um, Jeff Hardy came back uh, after came Sting back. and Darby. He's never been in AEW before. <laughs> he came back to save his brother. Okay, okay, fair enough. So Sting and Darby were getting whooped, and then all of a sudden, like, do you start hearing that and then all of a sudden one of the biggest pops uh that i can remember hearing in a long time i didn't um, know that that wasn't um wwe <clears throat> music until like this week i thought that was i thought that was wwe music apparently not it's crazy so jeff comes out uh it starts hitting the you know joint on on the apron real quick and then while, runs while, and while saves his brother. His brother. Getting, his ass, getting yes. his ass stomped in. Yeah. The, the that best man thing I, the, the best thing I saw was that he was charging a special up, essentially, to use before, you know, this ain't getting no in the ring. Game. This ain't so, no video game. I, I like that, personally. Like, you know, I, I get I, and I'm, he, I'm willing to apply that. This ain't no video game. Look, I, I'm willing to apply that for anybody that, you know, does the pose or the uh-huh. dance. You were willing to do that, that shit in 2020 with Rhea. You were just I like, hey, I didn't hear the, I ain't hear the joke then. Okay, sure. That that would have worked. Look, that, I, I'm here to tell you, that wouldn't have worked on you back then. You were like, this whole Charlotte shit sucks. I don't care. It does. Get the it, fuck it, out. Look, look, hey, was I right? <laughs> no, nah, we got we got some four star we got a four star <laughs> match out of that at WrestleMania, so no. Um, but yeah, uh 
I, we I, got her torpedoing the entire brand. Did she torpedo it or did the pandemic torpedo it? She torpedoed it because she never put anyone over the whole time there. I don't disagree with you. Uh, I, I, w- I would just say uh, the Charlotte shit, while I hated it outside, draw. while I hated outside of the matches, um, that shit was going down once uh, once NXT didn't have that crowd and they were out here wrestling in a, in a fucking LA fitness in, in, in front of nobody. It was already going down. But anyway, uh, yeah, back to this. Um, yeah, like Jeff's here. Jeff's still good. Um, the problem is Matt's not. <laughs> so I don't. So like, uh, they'll figure. I'm, I'm sure they'll be. They'll figure out how to make this work. Um, they're a valuable tag team. Uh, just because of the name and the stuff they can do. Uh, you Very know, the, the matches, whatever else. And, and Jeff's going to be. You know, they're going to sell a lot of merchandise. Jeff's always. You know, Jeff's always been a big star. Not, he's fucking Teflon. Um, so yeah, like that's a big get. Um, I just, uh, I can't say I'm thrilled about the, 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 another Hardy's nostalgia run. Um, I uh, think the match is going to, I think the match is going to be good enough to where like, we'll, we'll like over time we'll be like, eh, whatever. We'll shrug. Yeah. yeah. Um, doesn't thrill me on the surface, but you know, we're here now. So, um, Jeff got uh he did swans on the end they they did hug each other and that was that was a real nice moment so seeing you know because we know if anything Matt loves his his little brother like a lot <laughs> so um after that Swerve was backstage uh and then he was shown uh Tony Nice interrupted him Swerve wondered who would be the first one to interrupt him uh and then he said he has a history of wrestling on Friday nights and thinks they should do it again and Swerve said he's going to beat that ass just like he used to after that Tony Schiavone was back and he was welcoming good um i noticed that i didn't hear anybody like complain about Swerve talking making his allusions to WWE this week as opposed to anyone else making their allusions to WWE or talking about WWE Hmm. I wonder why that is. Yeah, it's it's. I, I I don't know. But normally, like people normally be all on that sort of thing. I don't know why. Well, you're not allowed to. I, I think it's because people like. I think people because because these particular people that mention that stuff like Swerve and don't like like when CM Punk does it because they don't like CM. Ah uh, ah. Uh. It, it's not about it's not about the actual thing. It's about the it's about not liking the person. Ah uh, yeah. We're, you know, I, I think I got a a nice little. Thing, looking at the rest of this show, this is going to be pretty fun. So, um, yeah, man. Uh, after that, Shivani was back again. Welcome the Wardlow to the ring. Wardlow uh, says, you know, you can always, you always come to a moment where you want to help someone else accomplish their dreams or take the chance to fulfill your own. Wardlow uh, says, before Max, he did it a lot for someone and got nothing in return. Little he did he know he's walking out of one cage into another with Max. He knew Max wasn't a good person, but he asked for forgiveness from the crowd for associating with such trash. He grew up very poor. He had to watch his mother struggle. Max changed his life, and for that, he thanks him, but does not give him the right to disrespect someone like he did. Warlow says he's still under contract with Max, but he no longer gives a damn. He no longer is uh, watching his back. He's not his bodyguard. He's not a member of the Pinnacle. He's finally free. Warlow tells Max to be smart, and if he lets him go from his contract, he'll leave him alone. Warlow only cares about becoming a TNT champion and then obtaining a new contract. He's not going to stop at the TNT title. He's letting everybody know he's going for the world belt because AEW is Warlow's world. Like, this was like the mission statement promo. We found out this guy can fucking talk to. When does the rock, James, when do we start like painting the, the color of the rocket, the strap on him? <laughs> he has it all. <laughs> I mean, I love this. Yeah, I love it too. Um, if you bear with me one second, I will be able to find you some special audio of um, of us being, you know, really early and quick to this uh, Wardlow thing. Um, we we were on it quick, I believe. Like, you know, it was. Oh no! Uh, let's see. Here we go. So, um, Dellen. You know, a few months ago, like, yeah, last month was like, uh, had this tweet and it said, day one Warlow fans seeing people mad into this story talking about the CM Punk MJF thing, right? So here we go. 
whole world, look around, look around you. Look at this. We created this. This didn't exist before we were here. The whole world, look around, look around. Yeah. Warlow's world, indeed. Um, this is great. Um, I had saw him do uh, some talking thing. It might have been a sit down. It, no, it was a sit down thing with Jericho when they were doing Pinnacle versus Jericho. Um, and they did the sit down thing, and he talked to, to Jericho about how he about how Jericho screwed up his line talking about Warlow. He talked about how like you, you flubbed your words. You're like this great all time great talker. But you flubbed your words, and you got to me because like you're shooking me right. And from that moment on, I was like, this dude can talk. Like, I've heard him do an interview once or twice. Sounds like a sounds like a smart guy or whatever else. Um, like, it's good at sit-down interviews. Sit-down interviews and Russell promo was totally different. He did this, and it was, it was basically like the same guy, right? It wasn't like him being, you know, a goofed-up guy. It's not like he's high on cocaine. Wasn't yelling and screaming. Right. And I was like, this is going to work. He already has – he already can be – he already can do – have good matches – he he looks how he looks or whatever else. Like Look, and the warlord, let me a, tell y'all, that man's winning in the ring and out the ring. <laughs> so from a traditional sense, like it seems like he ticks like virtually every single box you want out of out of a uh, out of an American professional wrestler. Like it seems like, you know, I think um was it last year? Last year we did American um when we did not American, when we did the uh newcomer of the year. Yeah. When we talked about it, it was like he didn't win, I don't think, but we were like, who's a person the that, who's a person the most that's most likely to make who's a person that's gonna make the most money? We were both like, oh, Warlow. And here we are. He's going to make the most money. <laughs> it's going to happen. Yeah, man. I, I was very get the, excited get the about print this. ready. I was very excited about this. Uh Warlow had a has a long history going back to being in the cage match with Cody of rising to the occasion. Uh he's Paid his dues, kind of as a heel coming up. He eerily has a Batista trajectory, like it's all kind of right there. It's he's been thirty four the years beginning. old. He's thirty four years old right now, so like he's in that that perfect sweet spot, like where the next couple years can be his if they want it to be. He's it, he, I, and he's 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 laid the groundwork. You know everything he's done now to like yeah. to have the, the switch flipped on him. And given his age, like he fits in that. Like we were talking about this a couple weeks ago. Like uh, with the pillars all being like you know early thirties, late twenties, and then the killers being you know all in their like mid to late twenties. Like there is going to come a time where like they're going to need a guy or two to be a bridge or be more of that same more of that same. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, on the same timeline as like Hangman, there needs to yep. be somebody also like in that you know an adult but not old. Um, and you know, World is someone I thought about. Um, obviously, you know, you think of Keith Lee as well, but yeah, like they're gonna that like that he this next like two years, we're gonna it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. That's all I'll say. It's gonna be fun. Bruce is asking fantasy booking questions. I I don't know how I would book the uh, MJF Wardlow program, it, it, but th- like they do a good enough oh, job. I mean, like, a, <laughs> oh, I, 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 I got some okay. ideas. Like you maybe he beats idea? him for the belt one day or something. But I, I don't got, know. I got an idea right now. You put you you put you put them in the semi main event of the pay per view. That's what you put. That, that's it. That's all I got. That's all I got. Like people are gonna love it. People hate MJF. People are gonna love this fucking guy for standing up to this asshole. Like they're gonna have that storyline and not, and like have MJF screw him every so often or whatever else and maybe even make MJF the champion eventually and then have a title match where MJF's the champion. I, I'm not know as far as who wins. I don't know, but whatever. Like it's gonna be super hot whenever they like have their match eventually or match. I, I feel I feel like one thing you can do throughout the lead up to the matches have MJF pulling out different provisions of the contract that Warlow didn't know he signed, like. Um, like he's never allowed to challenge MJF or, you know, he, uh, he has like the, like the whole deal with the title joint. Um, like if he's going to release Warlow, Warlow has like a 90 day no compete clause. Like, yo, you can't actually have a match, different shit like that. Like the fuck with them, like different stuff that's in the contract provisions, like that Warlow didn't read. And eventually all them shits are going to run out and the day's going to come where it's like, I'm on your ass. Like, and and Warlow fucks them up. That's what I do. Yeah, bro. I, 
um, Alpha Academy just did a combo finish on D'Angelo Dawkins where uh, Gable does a German suplex. But before he does that, he gets a German suplex because uh, it's set in motion by a uh, a tornado lariat from Otis. That shit is awesome. Mm. That shit was awesome. Uh, but anyway, uh, bad did the lecture at hand. So QT is showing backstage with, with Keith Lee. He said he, he thinks they have a common enemy with Team Taz. QT says he has stroke in AW, which is fucking hilarious. Um, <laughs> he wants to let him know he has he has Keith Lee's back. Keith says he has to have a large back, so he's good. He said uh, that Marshall QT said Lee's going to pay for it. After that, we got uh, World Tag Team Title Match, Jurassic Express, and the Acclaimed. I don't really think um, Max had really too much to say this week in, in his rap. He just kind of kicked the verse. He did so, not. Yeah. So he had, even, that, he had he had even less wrestling to do in this. Yeah. This was yeah. this was, one was another hard one to pay attention to for me. They got a light. This is awesome chant. I think the crowd was starving at this point. Uh, but Jurassic <laughs> Express. <laughs> Jurassic Express uh, ended up keeping the 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 the, the uh, belts here. Got another solid win for them to build them up for that six man tag coming next week or whenever. Uh, yeah, is or this week, excuse me. And um, yeah, besides that, not really too much on this one. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Like um, I don't. I don't know if it's just uh, of late, but I'm gonna like there's a few shows I have to go back and rewatch because like I, I I've been in like a I don't know in a weird mood where like I just have not been into um, AEW's matches in general. Like there've been a few um, where I'm like, oh yeah, that's a great match, but um, but like as far as being able to like rate it and be like, oh that's a blank star match, I have to go back and rewatch a, almost all this shit because like I have no frame of reference. Uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, that match it was not. <laughs> they tried because you know it's, it's uh, Jurassic Express and his Bowens, but like it, it just wasn't doing. Um, I don't know. It. Yeah, you're right. Also, what do you think of the crowd? Because I thought the crowd wasn't necessarily like there was a lot of hot stuff that happened, but like for the matches, they it, it seemed like they weren't really into the matches, or maybe and that might be a byproduct of like them doing so many like really cool non wrestling segments. I think the crowd like didn't know how to. Like they were blindsided. They they didn't realize they were about to get New Year's Dash. Like New Year's Dash and like a better version of New Year's Dash. Or Raw After Mania. Or a good one. Right. Like I can't think of a New Year's Dash maybe since like the elite formed (laughs) that had like as many angles and, you know, crazy shit happening as this did. Like because a while a couple of them New Year's Dash shows were like, oh, nothing's happening on these. Like and then, of course, the Raw After Mania is like, they stopped them shits really. Like, yeah, like two years ago, three years ago. I think even more than that. Like, it was like they figured out, I think it was 2018. They were like, oh, we're not going to actually do anything until like the next week. So it all kind of, you know, faded out. But after that, we got a number one contenders match. Layla Hirsch, Thunder Rosa. They went about eight or nine minutes. Thunder got the win. Layla, of course, had beat Statlander um, the night before. Uh, Thunder Rosa was given this charity number one contenders match. I don't like this, um, the way it was like set up. I think it's, you know, and then they announced the cage match after, which we kind of predicted pretty much as we were sitting in the seats <laughs> at Revolution. Um, I think this was lazily done. I think this was unbefitting. Like, this is your biggest, like, women's feud in company history, right? And this whole thing kind of feels unfitting of like, all right, this belt's going to change hands now, obviously, because it's going to be in the cage match in Thunder Rose's hometown. And it feels anticlimactic. It feels like it's already decided. I felt like they kind of wanted to get Brit an official win over Thunder Rose on the books, um, which is why they extended it. Of course, like the the one year anniversary of St. Patrick's Day Slam, they're doing it on. Like I said, I can appreciate that. I think this thing is falling flat, though. And then the match that they had where it was like. It was like they gave us like this toned down thing to do the angle to do the real match this week. And it was like, I'm I don't think I'm buying it. A lot of people are buying it. I don't care about Britt Baker matches. 
sorry. I'm just. I, it's, it's been too much. It's been too much of of just ugh, whatever. Um. There. At least she's no longer swallowing the baby faces with how over she is. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. Like, a lot of this stuff isn't her fault. Like, she got so over that they should have just turned her baby face, but they were like, well, if we turn her baby face, maybe, and she, maybe, like, they won't be then as there's into no it. One, yeah, or maybe there's no one to beat her. It. But it's like, hey, um, she's basically, like, done a year of nothing. Um, so whatever, like change the belt. I don't care. Um, I, I think that, I mean, I will say this, like, I think the match will be good. Like, even, even though I don't care that they, whenever they, you know, that are going to bleed, like, uh, like if they don't bleed, I'll be, I'd be fucking shocked. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, like I think the match is better suited for them to have a better match in it. No, with no rules or, you know, no DQ than it is with, you know, them trying to, um, like, a regular match. Uh, you know, um, as far as Thunder versus, uh, Thunder Rosa versus, uh, Layla, I like their mat wrestling, but, like, something was missing. Um, I don't know if it's, I don't know, but, um, I did like their, I did like their mat wrestling to start, but, um, yeah, you're right. Like, it was just, like, this can, for AEW, given that they don't really, they, like, they've prided themselves for so long on, like, not doing title rematches over and over and over or whatever else. Um, and this is not over and over. This is just, like, a, you know, you had a title match, and then, like, this person that lost title matches gets one two weeks later. Um, it, 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 you know, it's rare, but it, it because it's so rare, it feels kind of like, eh, where did this come from? Right? Like, this is, this is not, this is not like the others. Um, where, like, you lose and you have to go away for months and come back. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, they're going to get to it and it'll be, you know, it'll be a big moment. Um, I think it'll be a really good match, but as far as, um, this feud, it, it's done nothing for me. Yeah. Um, we got like when the match happened at revolution, like they got like the bell pop, it was hot to begin, like people wanted it. And then like, and it was 17 minutes of mid. Yep. Then just and like interference, I don't know what happened. Bullshit like, and visual house of torture. And, yeah, like it was, uh, it was all this stuff of like, it was all this stuff to protect people. It was like we got to visual pins and and it's like, hey man, like whatever. I like, it, it wasn't for me. I don't know who it was for, but it wasn't for me. Yep. Uh, after that, so. Um, <laughs> Uh, they said it's going to be in a steel cage. Britt then came on screen and said there's more conspiracy stuff going on. Thunder should be at the back of the line. Yeah. Britt's not afraid of it. She's afraid of, of what happens if Carney riffraff like Thunder Rosa gets the title. Yeah. I think I think another part that what, also why I didn't like it was like you had Britt cut that promo where she fucking just, she just like ate Thunder Rosa alive as far as like saying like uh, you know you're basically made her you know seem like she was like this big and and then like after that um she keeps cutting this promo or keeps coming up with this keeps saying like this talk point where it's like yeah you won the match that they talk about us with all the t- about all the time as far as uh my career but who really won i'm just like what a dumb fucking thing to say <laughs> i fucking hate that with a passion yeah i lost the biggest match career but who really won you or not you, motherfucker! You lost. People remember you because you cut yourself open with a razor blade. Who gives a shit? Uh, I, w- I wouldn't say who gives a shit. A lot of people clearly gave a shit over the months. They, uh, it, okay, they gave a shit because it's a woman bleeding on TV. Like if that had been if that. Like where where are the CM Punk shirts from this past weekend? Where are the MJF shirts from this past weekend? Where are like the twenty different Cody shirts? Like there is just a different level of. They, um, they sold a shirt with the blood on it with Punk and MJF like the week before the match. Like the fake. Was blood. it the shirt with the photo? Yeah. Okay. Um. Not the same thing, but okay. Um. I I I think the thing for me is like there is just a different standard or a different feeling of you know violence with women in wrestling, 
it was it was just obvious. But like what people when people go back to that match last year, like it is so much about and even the match with um Penelope and the bunny and Tay and Anna, just like there there is a thing, there is a ghoul there is a ghoulness going on where people are into like these women bleeding because they don't they they don't see it or whatever else because like there's just a we we baby the women um, in American wrestling or whatever else, or in wrestling in general, and I just like, I, eh, like I, I'm all over blood, so like, like it doesn't do anything for me. Like, like the kind of thing that people pop for with like women bleeding, like it doesn't do anything for me because like I don't care about bleeding. So like, eh, whatever. Um, obviously that's a me thing, but like I, but going back to this talk point about like. They who do they talk about after the match that you won is like, bro. Like I understand that this is this is not a real sport, but imagine saying that shit in real life. I, I, imagine if this were a real sport. You know how fucking ridiculous that sounds. Can you imagine LeBron after losing all the finals to the Warriors be like, "Hey, Steph, check this out." <laughs> I mean, look, check, check this out, look. Steph. Check this out, Steph. Look, they do talk about LeBron like he actually won those. That's more of a star status thing. And also, like, um, in a real sport, you can look at performance and be like, oh, yeah, like, Steph or LeBron played better than Steph did in these finals, and so did Kevin Durant or whatever else. Like, that's that's one thing. Like, we're talking about, like, a, uh, uh, that's a bad example. Uh, let's let's do Tyson Holyfield. Mm-hmm. The first one, not the second where he bites his ear. He's like, "Well, who are you talking about after that?" Well, he fucking bit someone's ear. Like, don't don't do this. Don't don't be an asshole. But like, imagine like, hey, hey, holy fibble, hey, bro, like, I knocked that nigga out, or I, I beat the shit out of him, right? And then like, Mike Tyson's like response for the second fight is, "Who did he talk about after this one?" It's like, bro, who cares? He knocked you out. Who cares? Like, <laughs> you're about to fight again. What are we doing here? And I, it, it, so for me, and it's unfair because like it's pro wrestling, it's not it's not a real sport or whatever else. But just for me, it's like it's fucking irritating. And I like, I hope she she intentionally did that for heat because like it's it is working for me because I fucking hate that line. This talk put over and over and over because it's like so goofy. Um, so they're going Look, into the main event of Raw right now. True. It is Kevin Owens versus um versus uh Seth Rollins, and the winner gets the Austin match. Or they get to host the Austin segment. Same difference or whatever you want to call it. The, 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 whoever wins gets the interaction with Austin. Sound better? Does that sound better to you? Yeah. I, I, yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. And I, I, I don't know what happened. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, back to, back to so, this. So, um, Adam I hope they have a good match. I really do. Cause I, I don't want to watch a bad cage match, especially after like Cody had like that great thing. Like if they come out here and this shit isn't that good and they'd be like, Hey man, y'all should have stopped at Cody and, and Wardlow. No, nah, I know young bucks and the Lucha brothers. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Totally forgot about that. Yeah. No, um, Brit Adam said, uh, Brit said it won't matter if Rosa beats her. It's for the fucking title. It should matter. Wait, what was, so. what he said? What happened? He said, Britt also said it won't matter if Rosa beats her. It's for the fucking title. It should matter. I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't even get it. I must have missed that part. I must have missed that, too. My whole th- I'm still, like, stuck on the, like, this match that we had that, that people that got us attention, like, they talking about me after, the, even though I fucking lost in, like, bro, what? <laughs> it's so goofy. Like, what? What point are you trying to make? I don't, I don't, I don't get it at all. Like, are you trying to get in her skin by mentioning the part where she, where you lost to her already? That's weird. I, I think she's trying to say she's a bigger star than her. I, 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 maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. So we got the TNT Championship match, and all, and James, you can verify this in real time. All my sensors were going off, and I was like, it feels like. We are about to get a title change uh, on, yeah. on this this one here because uh, like I was like, well, they got three title matches on this show. Match the this bell bit. rang at like eight forty seven or eight forty nine or something. I was like, they what? got they got all these people around the ring. Uh, no one would. They broke up Sammy's group earlier in the fucking show. Like it was like, um, what the fuck is going on here? Like I and I probably would be able to find it, but. Um, 
they um had a match and and sammy of course uh it really seals i knew the belt was changing when he did that 450 through the uh announce table or through the table and Scorpio Sky moves out the way and he goes through. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's fucking losing. And um, they basically Sc- – Scorpio beats the fuck out of him the whole match. Um, there's, like, some hijinks of, you know, misdirection. It, it, it was like, you know, like when a wire and somebody was about to get shot, like different start sh- shit started to happen around and they started swinging the camera. That's kind of what they were doing. All of a sudden, Sammy was getting caught with a finisher and that was it. And Scorpio Sky is the new TNT champion. And man, James, for the longest time, I've just had to watch this stuff on Twitter from these fucking cowards and and these and these people, you know, they swear to God, you know, there was just this, you know, this mass conspiracy, this hatred for for black wrestlers and AEW from never mind on the night that there's three different acts challenging for all the titles and on the same show never mind that never mind that we pretty much called it uh as what was happening the entire time like hey there has to be you know like there's a limited amount of black wrestlers and a lot of them are being warehoused in wwe and then the second they're not they'll actually be signed to aw and it looks like they know what to do with them never mind that you know scorpio sky has always been protected in this act and in this promotion and pushed from day one and um, presented <laughs> and presented at all like the media stuff too um never mind the, the fact that he was the first tag team champion in this promotion never mind that he was the first one to pin chris jericho never mind <laughs> that the entire men of the year act and fucking um dan lambert and ethan page were condoms around him the whole time as ethan page was losing all the matches as i came on this show january 6th this year um and said hey i feel like scorpio sky is really close because something is happening i don't think people are picking picking up on it um I don't have, you know, while the Black Utopia began firing wrestlers left and right, uh, warehousing them, having Brock Lesnar beat the shit out of them, uh, firing them, and, you know, they're doing weird barbershop segments with Carmella Hayes, I hear, in NXT now, and... I don't know. Like you look at this WrestleMania card. Hmm. I'm looking for. I'm looking for all the. You know the blackness. I. You know. I'm. I don't know, James. Am I missing it? Well, I mean, they had a match and then it got basically put on the shelf because someone broke their neck this weekend. Okay, where was that in relation to being <laughs> on the top? Oh yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. I, that I was like. Saying. Yeah, like, and then I don't know, man. It. Like, uh, it seems like uh, the game has been switched on some ludicrous shit, James, because I see Swerve. I see Keith Lee. I see Private Party with a renewed focus. I see Hobbs out there getting over no more. I see Scorpio Sky with a TNT title now. Um, and mind you, he could come off that bitch next week, right? Right. My point still stands. Like, <laughs> like the game has been switched on some ludicrous shit, and I feel like all the all the shit, all the crying that was happening and all that. Let's talk about it. Like, I it it, it never held any water to me. It was like I feel like I know how the wrestling business works, and I think while people were crying uh, up in arms about all these unrealistic expectations of a wrestling promotion, from like a standpoint of, hey, this is a new company. Hey, we have these stars right now and that are available to us hey we're going to probably push uh someone that's won the flair thes award before hey we're probably going to push someone that was a major push act in wwe for half a decade hey maybe we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna push one of the greatest wrestlers of all time hey Maybe we have like a young guy in the faction with like that flair thes wrestler that we have the fact that no, there was no black world champion, there still hasn't been a black AW champion. I feel like if you're not seeing what everything is happening around this inside of what three years, you don't want to see it. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I mean, you could you could follow through this like from from year to year and see the difference 
and that also comes with the availability of talent. Like, you know, a year ago, they got at the end of the last year. For most of the last year, they didn't have Jay Lethal. They didn't get Keith Lee. Forgot until, about Jay Lethal. They didn't get Keith Lee until this year. They didn't get the Swerve until this year. Uh, they start using the acclaim when they could last year. They would have used Top Flight more, but uh, Darius Dante got hurt, and then they used Dante instead. Um, there was, like, there have been, you know, Scorpio has always been someone they wanted to do something with. Um, I, I think at times, you know, a lot of the stuff that they did was off, you know, off TV, and mostly all the most of the work was all done on on the darks, uh, which I don't like, but whatever. Um, like you mentioned, he was the he was the he was the 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 key guy on the first tag team champion, um, and try to figure out how to make him a solo. It took a while, but like they put him with Lambert, one of the best talkers in 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 the world. They put Paige with him, a person that I think like is talented enough to do, be able to do something on his own, but they still put him with them to basically be a, a mission, a condom for for Scorpio. Um, and we we got this match, and like I was surprised at the title change, but that was because like we had just had a pay per view where nobody lost their title. That too. So I I thought, well, if you're if they were going to do that, why wouldn't they put the save the t- put the put that match on the card, you know, um, and had had a title change on on the card, but they didn't. They decided to save it for for TV and. You know, we always talk about how it effectively works as a TV title most weeks. Um, so, yeah, and uh, you know, I, I think I think the thing that I was missing, like I, I wasn't with you until the I saw until the six thirty spot. And then I was like, oh, okay, because now this fits in line with a lot of uh, title changes in TNT title matches where like somebody gets an injury mid match and then they're like or or working through stuff and then they get taken advantage of and beat on like that happened to Darby versus. Uh, Miro that happened with Miro against Sammy and now right here with Sammy versus um, Scorpio so like it fit in line like I like once you said I was like nah it's not enough time on the show and then the 630 happens like oh well it's, it's probably gonna happen now um, and it did and um, you know there's a great chance that or there's a very good chance that Warlow takes it right off him but there's also an even better chance in my opinion that like after that promo where it, Warlow says like like the how much the TNT title means to him, how they wove in that part where he's like, "I'll, let you, world build I'll let you, I'll let you get the TNT, t- I'll let you get the TNT title, so you if you win it, but I don't think you're going to win it." Um, like now that sets the stage for like, oh, like you screwed me, you screwed me out this thing that I cared about more than anything else is punk thing. Like, fuck you, I'm of course I'm going to screw you out of this uh, TNT title. Yep, of course I am. So yeah, like I think World, I think uh, I think Scorpio has a chance to be the champion for a minute. Um, he's a, you know obviously he's a very good wrestler. He's gonna have some good matches or some very good matches. So like whatever, like uh, I you know who you drop it off to? Don't care, don't care. We're here now. <laughs> he's, he's a champion. I think he's gonna do good with it for the time he has it. And like I'm pretty much any pretty sure anybody that's gonna be the TNT champion is gonna do a pretty good job with it. Now that it's like. Away from some of the goofier stuff that was happening earlier, uh, earlier in its uh, in its um run, but like to be fair, Cody did a really good job to, with it too. But it, and a lot of that stuff that happened with it at times that felt goofy wasn't his fault. Like he was giving people a lot of chances that I would probably never hope never see. You know, get shots at the TNT title. Like I don't want to see fucking War War Horse out here ever again. Cody gave that man everything, and it wasn't good enough, and he still wasn't good enough. Like that Warhol right. horse match was absolutely not Cody's fault. Cody gave that man everything. Had that been like Pac or somebody, it would have had like a four and a half star match or some shit like that. It just just went in the cards. So so yeah, like I, I feel like they have a better handle on all that stuff. Yeah, um, Sammy, of course, uh, Tay Conti came out on screen. It's kind of like the first time they kind of acknowledged this. So like, what do you, you think know, of that? I don't like it, uh, and not for like the the reason. Like I. I have no problem with them like being a couple in public and then mm-hmm. posting stuff. I think it's fucking hilarious, actually. Like that people get so upset over them. Um, I guess the only people thing is like, oh yeah, like they're like people fucking hate them. Like, um, is it like P- is it a I hate PDA type of thing? Yeah, and and uh, I I hate them. I think Sammy's a dickhead. I 
Ty Condi is a home wrecker, like all this other shit. Ah, that okay. okay. And and then like the the stuff where um I the only thing that is kind of weird is like all right, he did the proposal on TV. You never saw anything. Then like Ty Conti runs out, but eventually that they were going to break that glass at some point anyway. So it would have never been a right time or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, Hey man, they got, I, I, they got I hope they're called. not tempted. I hope they're not tempted to turn them both heel because, like, that would be corny to me. <sighs> because, like, and, and like try to play into it for heat. Like, because I'm like, let them just be happy together. Well, aren't they about like, to do the? Aren't they about to do this? Like Paige Van Zant and Scorpio or Ethan Page versus those two? Like they're gonna be the baby faces, right? Like, and and Paige Van Zant got involved in this thing, attacked Ty Conti. That was one of the diversions that went on while Scorp loaded up on the TKO. Um, and Paige Van Zant ended up signing her contract on Ty Conti's ass, which is pretty funny. Um, yeah, Did I miss it's. That? Yes, we all missed it because it was cut off. Like, uh, okay. like, so they, like they, where the hell are you talking about? <laughs> they, they, they posted this on on Twitter like immediately after because they knew they they lost time or whatever. So she posts, she signs the the contract. Scorps posing with the belts. They go off air. American Top Team is on top of the shit, and I think Sam Guevara was fucking excellent as a TNT champion uh, in this past reign. Arguably even better than the first one. Uh, you start talking about the Cody match. You talk about that three way. Uh, his match by Isaiah Cassidy, I thought it was pretty good. Him uh, and Dustin was really good. Like I, I really enjoyed this. I thought this was a. Uh, I hope he wins it again in the future. Just because like there's there's a lot of competition, and he, I think you know when Sam Guevara. Neither came, one of his reigns were long. Right, right, and like it seems like there's still more there. Um, He's a guy that I think is can't miss in a big match at this point. Uh, his matching with Darby, I thought was awesome. Um, like he's someone that will take ungodly risks, like <laughs> at any time, especially if it's on pay per view uh, or if he's in a main event. Like I can't like every big Sammy Guevara match. Like you can think of some insane shit he did where he got Tombstone off the top rope from MJF, where he fucking uh, went through Canadians destroyed their table against Dustin. The fucking ladder match with Cody where he's doing the, the huge fucking cutter. The fucking Spanish fly on the pay per view. The fucking four fifty here. Like he's he's a fucking like he's a madman. And I I couldn't be happier to, to be a fan of his. So um, they'll replace Cody and Brandy in this this stuff. It'll probably get him some kind of look, and maybe he wins the belt back at some point. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I too am excited to see what Scorpio Sky is done with it. They've put a lot into him, a lot of equity into him uh, over the you know years. Obviously, he's tight with the Bucks. Like he's, he goes back with Kaz and Daniels and SCU in the comments. Uh, Solo Domo says SCU itself was a launch pad for Scorpio Sky. Kaz and Daniels said they've turned the addiction into SCU to get him over. Uh, so it's this isn't something that just was a, a reaction. This wasn't none of that. This was a, as a guy that is clearly somebody clearly has liked this guy from Bruh, day one. They had him wrestle. Remember they had him wrestling the shoe? Yes. They had him wrestling in one shoe to get him over. Yep. This has been happening for three years. Or about three years. Two and a half yep. years. Yep. And he just signed that, that five year renewal. Like I didn't know uh, that. at the at the end of last year. So it was like, bro, he's a guy that was going to be keyed in. Like I don't know what to tell people. There's there's all these flashing lines. Like it was it's like, yo, it just makes me think you don't like AW, which is fine. But if you're going be to analyze it. it be honest about it, and if you are trying to analyze it, and you're coming at a point where you don't like it, don't ignore the flashing fucking line lights in front of you, like that are telling you these things are happening. Like this is where you get where you get tripped up or whatever. Like if you're trying to talk about something you may not enjoy, if you're missing the signals that are going on, that's that's where the disconnect comes. That's where you start getting ratioed on Twitter and shit. Like <laughs> people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? But that's it for Dynamite. So, James, hit the oh, music. Oh, Rampage, Rampage, Rampage. Oh, that's right. That's right. Rampage. Let's do Rampage quick. Okay. Um, so, AEW Rampage. We had Darby Allen versus Isaiah Cassidy. Or, oh, excuse me, no. He wrestled Mark Quinn. Quinn. This is Quinn's first match back. Um, singles. Yeah. I like the so, match. Yeah, it was a good match. Um, I thought Quinn, when, when I was watching him wrestle, I was like, bro. 
he's a completely different wrestler than he was in the summer of 2019 and in dynamite these guys were like skinny little kids then like i feel like these guys have been in the gym like and <laughs> now they're away from matt hardy um there's <laughs> a lot important. like I, I i think this the time with matt hardy helped them because like it kind of is stripped their identity of like yo the next young bucks like mm-hmm. that's a lot of fucking pressure and that just stripped that like tag off of them and now they can like i'm sure they got a lot of they learned a lot from him and everything like that so i'm interested to see where they go and then obviously leave that next young bucks thing for top flight because that's a whole and yeah. i and i think i think private party do like different things well than top flight does like these mm-hmm. guys are fucking they leap off the screen at you like with their personalities i feel like yeah like i mean like obviously i think that um athletically i both of them both of those teams are better athletes in general than the Young Bucks, but, like, what the... What what type fight does, like, they're, like, two of the elite flyers in the world from the stuff you see them do. Um, I think Quinn... I think Quinn could fit in that category, but, like, I mean, it's not both of them at the same time. From mm-hmm. the same... From the same fucking like womb you know what i mean like it's, it's not to say you know like it's 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 super impressive um like it's totally different thing like they're not the same things they're not like i think oh. cassidy has a lot more um a lot more well well-rounded game than than any of those other three yeah uh mark wins a fucking psycho by the way yeah. i mean they're a 450 splash to the outside of the ring knees yes. just fucking he thinks he's fucking cavanario what's yeah. it? Not now check this out right when when uh when the caveman was doing that shit back in 2019, we watched him and um at, at Russell Con doing that shit, right? We were like, "Yes, insane!" Right? When's the last time you heard about uh Cavanario? I ain't heard about him since. There you go. You know, that like, might be I, a I'm, like of Mexico, I, I, but... I'm asking that, like, I'm asking that in good faith. Like, I'm, if he's still out here, you know, he's still great, great. But I ain't heard nothing from I. Ain't, you know, I hear, I see every single weekend. I see Vikingo doing something fucking outrageous. I, I don't see nothing about having area, so I, it leads me to concern. It leads me to believe that, like, yeah, he's fucked up his knees, or he or he's on a downturn because of what he's done to his knees doing that kind of stuff. So yep. Mark Quinn better be careful doing this shit. Yeah. So um, Darby ended up getting the armbar tap out. So yep. after that, we saw the the AFO uh, emerge, just the Andrade family office. <laughs> Uh, and they emerged to confront Darby and Sting, but they were met by the Hardy Boys. Uh, Matt had just had the, the gear on deck just in case, you know, it was taped the same night, you know. So uh, Jeff Hardy came out in the mesh, you know. Yes, original, the original mesh mani- militia. Yes, yes. Uh, are, are we going to get a picture? Are we going to get a picture of Keith Lee with with uh, with Jeff and Matt in the mesh? God, I mean, I, I feel like we should ask. You know, hopefully the universe brings that uh brings that out. So uh, Twitter search it. Yeah, Jamie Hader uh, defeated Mercedes Martinez. I think they have a better match in them. Yeah, I thought this match was okay. Uh, I did not like his matches as much as a uh, like cage match liked it. Apparently. Oh, but, what, um, what did cage match give it? Like three and a quarter. Oh wow. Um. So Keith Lee and QT Marshall went at it. Um, I liked this for what it was. Um, I thought QT looked great. Um, I thought he made Keith, look, Keith Lee look like a monster, and then Keith Lee destroyed the fucking factory, like all of them. So I um I'm watching that match, and like I see what QT's trying to do. I don't think he did a good job or that good of a job doing it. Like he's trying to like fly or he's trying to, he's trying to bump like crazy from him as if he's like Isaiah Cassidy. Mm-hmm. He's not Isaiah Cassidy. <laughs> like, um, like he, like, I think there are probably like five or six big spots where he's trying to big bump for, for Keith Lee. I think he did one of them. Well, and I was like, I appreciate what he's trying to do. I just think he didn't do it well. And like, you know, uh, I don't know, but I saw people like, gushing about like the job he did for him I was like well what else were you supposed to do was Keith Mark supposed to go seven go to go like seven competitive minutes and then lose at the end with Keith Lee no he's supposed to go out there and get thrown around but I don't think he I don't think he you know I don't think they 
they mesh that well to be able to figure out how to make the flight mechanics work, if you will. Uh, then after that, um, like QC set up for a diamond cutter, but he got uh, caught by a big slam from Keith Lee. So Keith Lee got the win, uh, kind of like the power uh, slam over joint. Yeah. And um, he got rid of Solo and Komarodo. And then all of a sudden, uh, Team Taz was on his ass. And, uh, you know, Starks came in, and then uh, Hobbs gave Lee the big spine buster. And was and we went off with, with Hobbs, like, with that face, you know. So, uh, after that, we had Swerve Strickland against Tony Nese. And this was a rematch of their uh, – they've had a couple matches on 205 Live. They had um, – a match that I really enjoyed from 205 Live. I think it was in the middle of 2020, if I'm not mistaken. And I think I, I want to say that was like four and a quarter, and that was in the PC. So that was like, that was an excellent match. So I was mm-hmm. excited to see this. Um, Swerve came out, looks like total superstar. Um, he's, you know, got the got the new jacket, got the new interest music. I think he's going to get over. Um, and this match, you know, I, it was another awesome Swerve and Nice match. And they've had a lot of these, and they have really good chemistry. Um, and I enjoyed this a lot, and I thought Nice looked great too. Yeah, I thought this was a very good match. I thought that um, Swerve has this, like, you know, I've talked to you about, like, how he has, like, he's basically doing makeshift martial arts like he's doing martial arts that he j- he's like that he has taught himself how to do <laughs> like at times but he even has that when it comes to like his grapple game like the way he was doing the way he was like uh getting, getting in and out, in and stuff, out. Yep. Yeah, yeah i was like what what drunken what kind of drunken master sh- grapple shit is this <laughs> uh it, it, i'm not saying in a bad way i like it was good with like yeah i was like yo what the fuck and i like i was like, entertained um but yeah like he's He's super talented, man. Um, Imagine firing him. Right. Well, I mean, you can say that about like anybody they, or damn near anybody they fired yeah. over the last uh, two years. Like, what are they doing? Yeah. Like, this, like there's like there's not enough. I, I don't get it. Like, I, I don't get it. I just don't. Like, he in, in, in AW, he projects as somebody you can put him in the ring with anyone with. Like well, it's like to, it's like not necessarily like I don't think you can say that about everybody. Given how narrow minded WWE thinks of talent, like it because was, he's tall, huh? He's tall, and then he can do submissions or he can fly. But he's not big, it's, yeah. Right. So, like, given how WWE is like so narrow minded on how they think of talent, it was like he he wasn't like whatever. Best case scenario, it probably wouldn't work out as well as it would have um, in in AEW, where the mo- rate they don't give a fuck what you look like for the most part. Like if if you look if you look bad enough, no say, Cody tonight. Sorry, right. if you look bad enough, they'll just be like, hey, you know, put a shirt on. Like, uh, but outside of that, it's just um, yeah. I think I don't know what Swerve is up to next. Uh, he'll probably you know win one or two more matches before he ends up like probably like. Getting involved with like uh, I don't know Andrade seems, or somebody. He he'll, he'll, seems, seems to be a baby face. So yeah, I think he's a baby um, face. Yeah, because so obviously he's ain't you know. I'm happy about that. Like I yeah. I like Swerve as baby face. Yeah, also, I don't know if I've t- I don't know if I've told him that, but okay. I should probably tell him that. <laughs> um, another thing, like uh, another thing, like yeah, um, niece like. He he, bro. Tony Nese is fucking awesome. He he is. Uh, he's very. I've he's, always he's, said he's, this. He's a damn good wrestler. Uh, he's not over at all. Oh, I mean, you know, same thing with Danger. Same thing, like yeah, like he, you got you. He gonna get. His, he got to. He won't get his claps till the bell rings. Yeah, like like Tony. I've always loved Tony Nese because I, I thought he always took pride in his gear. He took pride, obviously, in his in his performance and his body and. Maybe it's not there with like you know his character. And he's not charismatic. He's and just not stuff like that. But whatever. But like, bro, like I feel like like every promotion can use like I can have a Tony Nese on the roster. Good the wrestlers, yes. Like he's fucking like I like I've always liked Tony Nese. So then it's low stakes. He's in a low stakes yep. position. Yep. So um, yeah, I guess that's a good place to leave for AEW. 
Yeah. So, James, go ahead and hit the music. Okay, so the uh, the last weekend of February and the first weekend of March, we'll be talking about that. Um, I about uh, ninety minutes before uh, we started this podcast, I had got to the point where I could have started uh, New Blood One, but I, I pulled it up on YouTube. Saw that it was two hours and 28 minutes. And I was like, nope, I'm not finna just watch half of a starting show and then stop. And then, like, got a call Rich and be like, hey, bro, can we delay a half, a half hour, especially with the pending or, you know, the thought that we could get Cody um, on WWE television and we could celebrate the fact that he, that he is there. You know, he is safe and secure, um, you know, but whatever. So we'll cover that next week. Um, and obviously, uh, the other two shows like the Corrigan Hall show from, uh, I believe, uh, yesterday, but our Sunday, but, um, yeah, uh, the gist of this, cause I'm not going to go piece by piece, but I'll basically give you the results. Um, and I'll tell you what, uh, which matches are pretty good. Uh, so, um, from February 26th, you got Mina in a uh, singles match in the opener against Rena. Uh, match was okay at times, but uh, for the most part, this is skippable. Um, ultimately, uh, Mina ends up winning with an implant DDT. Um, next match, you get Kaguma and Hannon. Uh, match you really you rarely see is just a tag team together versus uh, Nats Point Mirai. Uh, you know, one of these you know, um, uh, you know, old old classic Donald Nomano, new Donald Nomano members. Um, you end up in uh in a Decent match. You end up getting uh, Natsupoy uh, in in the finish stretch with Hannon, and uh, it's funny because like you know Natsupoy is is twenty six, about to be twenty seven this year, and she's like four eleven. You get Hannon, who's uh, you know five six and seventeen, who's <laughs> so she's gonna be a fucking giant, and you know they're going back and forth, but she got to sell for this little woman <laughs> at that's, the same time. So funny. It's always funny watching like these Hannon sisters versus like versus like the high speeders because like it's funny. Like we'll get to it later uh, in the show, but yeah. Like uh, at the end, um, Nats Boy ends up beating her with the backlash that uh, that cartwheel uh, uh, dr- uh, power bomb. Um, next match after that, you end up getting um, Tam Unagi and Waka versus Shuri, Micah, and Hameka. <laughs> Tam Unagi out here, they they trying to carry so much, but like Waka Waka's the lowest pin eater in in the, in the company. She just is uh, Waka. Yeah, so she she got her ass whooped by Micah. Uh, Micah ended up uh, hitting her with the um, Sazanka. Sazanka is like when she does that, like that crazy judo, um, like that straight or that uh, straight jacket uh, judo throw she does, but like she just tears lays people out to death. Uh, that's that's what Sazanka is. Um, next match after that, you're gonna get uh, Mayu Hazuki and Kogo versus Julia Tekla and Morai. Um, you end up getting. Hazuki in there with uh, Mai at the end, and she ends up dropping her with the Mishinoka driver. Good match. Um, the uh, the main event is uh, the you know the the top four of Queen's Quest: Utami, uh, Kamatani, Azumi, and uh, and Lady C versus Oedo Tai, um, Momo Kid, Rowaka, and uh, Saki. So. Um, hold on. Why does it keep skipping? Uh, yes, yes, Saki. So, um, good match. You have a very good match. You end up having like Lady C. She's fighting for her life, obviously. Um, throughout the match, um, good interactions with with uh, Utami and Momo. Um, good interaction with Azumi and or uh, Azumi and uh, Starlight Kid. Kamatani wasn't in the match much. She did one dive, and outside of that, she might have been, had like been in the match for maybe like ninety, not even like sixty minutes. I don't know if she's hurt or not, or whatever else. But like she's mm-hmm. done 
very she had a very low workload the last two weeks seemingly for from all these multi multi tags man she's in she might be banged up but um yeah they end up getting um uh uh Rowaka in there and uh Rowaka ends up hitting um Lady C with the freezer bomb and they point out that uh at the pay per view um the tag match between um Utami and Lady C versus Momo and Rowaka in the same way, freeze a bomb for the win on Lady C, and they point out, like, you lost, you know, you're the pain eater, you're the bomb of the totem pole, you're a geek, you suck. Uh, they're getting the um, Lady C's head and talking about how, you know, you lost to the same move two matches in a row. You gotta, you, you, you fucking suck and this and that thing. You gotta, you gotta earn and prove your keep. So, uh, Momo suggested, uh, because of the Utami stuff, suggested that they do a five match series and I had never heard of this but like it's a new Japan thing from a previous era um and I'm going to tell I'm going to explain to you the rules as as it was displayed to me because mm-hmm. uh, cuz like I can't even explain it. I just need to read it out to y'all word for word um if I can just pull up um my here it is so um this is a New Japan uh, concept from the Showa era. There are five ropes. No, they're doing the tug of war. Um, there are five ropes tangled in the middle of the ring with the ends of the five ropes going to both sides of the ring. Um, the opposite, the teams on the opposite or opposite sides of the ring, uh, the ropes are tangled and the view of, of who's pulling the rope is obscured so that you don't know who you're matched up with during the tug of war. Um, so, um, all five members grab the rope and pull, and whoever has the other end of your rope, that's who you're wrestling in a singles match. And whichever, uh, you know, met, whoever wins um, the most singles matches wins the best five series. So, mm. um, the best five series for them is. Uh, it is. That sounds like one of those old modes that used to be in like WCW NWO World Tour. Really? Where you you pick five WCW members and you pick five NWO members and then you have. But they didn't matches. get through. But you didn't get through it through like the convoluted thing or the the trickery of you know right. the magic trick of the of the of the rope pool. Like yeah. this is just like the magic trick when they used it when they were doing the drawing straws things. Um, for you know that that multi that that what what I forgot what the hell Julia called that match, but the, you know, obviously they knew where to pull. Obviously they they you know on the tips of the of the, of the straws they know what color they are. Uh, yeah. By the way, we didn't talk about this at the time, but like when they were determining who was going to uh, Russell Kingdom this year, they had every they had all five faction members pick uh, pull straws. Um, so what they did was they had uh, they basically like they had um, they had Kid, they had basically the four that were in the match plus Shuri, and um, and it was like. It was one color, for t- or two of them were one color, two of them were another color, and then one was like blank, and it, the blank one was ass out and wasn't making it. So Shuri pulls first, and when she pulls first, she pulls that blank fucking straw, bro. She lets out a scream. The crowd laughs. My using the background laughing her ass off, about to fucking fall out and die, and and she, the bro, I've never. It was one of the best like comedic timing things ever. Like she, she's she looks. The crowd, she, she knows it and sees she pulled the, the, the blank one before she did. Mm-hmm. And then she, she, she looks up like why is the crowd reacting like she looks up. She, she shouts like ah, and she stares at it for like two and a half seconds. And then she looks at the dude like nah, let me pull one more time. And then the dude was like nah, get away from me, don't beat me up. Like don't, no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want no, no smoke. Like um. But before that, like uh, <laughs> Utami was the person that was being picked for Queen's Quest, and then like she asked uh, Kamatani asked like, "Can it be me? Can I do it?" And like Utami was like, "No, I want to go to I want to go to Wrestle Kingdom." And then she asked again, she's like, well, "Fine, if you want it so bad, you can do it. Since you want to be Dome Girl." Uh, but yeah, but anyway, um, yeah, like uh, that's yet to be decided. Um, who uh, the matchups yet? Like I think it was this week when they figured out who's who the matchups. I if you want to find out, go to Stardom no, Stardom World on um or we are Stardom Twitter. I don't know yet because I you know I don't know. Um, but they uh the five for Queen's Quest is the top four right now: Utami, Kamatani, Azumi, and um and Lady C. And then the the fifth person is X. It's not known yet. 
I'm assuming what happened uh, at New Blood is like they added that their new rookie that Utami was facing in the main event of New Blood. They had Utami beat her, probably asked her to join, and she's now in Queen's Quest. I don't know, I'm a, but I'm assuming that's what happened. Um, but yeah, so anyway, um, that was that was at uh, the end of the match. So uh, going into ne- the next set of shows, uh, we'll we'll touch back on the finish with uh, Lady C. Um, so opener of the of the twenty seventh the Sunday show, uh, Tam and Waka versus Saki and Rowaka. Um, this match is okay. Saki at the end ended up beating uh, Waka with a kill switch because Waka's a geek. Uh, uh, Mina ends up Mina and Unagi uh, end up facing Marai and Tekla. Uh, Rich, what do you think happened in the match between Saki? I'm sorry, uh, Mina and Unagi versus Marai and Tekla. What do you think happened? Marai and Tekla against Mina and Unagi. Um, I think Tekla lost. Um, no draw. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yes, he's, Unagi. Yeah, he's Unagi a champion. Yeah, okay. yeah. Very good. Very good match. Uh, or, or really fun match. Uh, Unagi in and, and Tekla end up fighting from their knees as time expired. Uh, but it's worth a watch if you have some time. Um, Mayu and Kogo versus Julia in in uh, my Sakurai. Um, Mayu and Julia they have some good chemistry. Most times, this time it was okay. Uh, there was a spot where uh, Julia's been doing this. Um, she's grabbing people off the ropes that are about to you know come off with like a second rope dive, and she's catching them in like a like a almost like got you in like a like you're a baby and then she like leans forward and she does you know she suplexes you and you flip over um she dropped Mayu in the back of her head um <laughs> and Mayu didn't Mayu look like that shit she like it hurt uh but yeah at the end um Julian's been getting Kogo isolated and she ends up beating her with a falcon arrow um next match after that Hazuki Kaguma and Hannon versus uh Kid Momo and Rena. Um, now this was more like, a, this is basically an outpost match for Sumo Hall first night because, uh, Hannon is, uh, defending the future belt against her sister, Rena. So they go down close and stretch and, um, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, at the end, Rena ends up beating her with, I can't remember what it was. Oh, a gory bomb. Um, but yeah, uh, match worth checking out if you have some time. Um, uh, Hazuki and, and, and Momo, like, they're, they have a match on the second night of, um, Osuma Hall, and, like, they're just dynamite together. Um, the main event, uh, you have, uh, Utami, the top four of Queen's Quest versus Shuri, Nasapoi, Micah, and Hameka. Um, and match is really good. Uh, at the end, you end up getting, uh, Hameka in there with, with Lady C, and, like, they're pulling out all the stops, getting her, Giving Lady C all these kickouts and all these saves from these big moves until fi- finally Hameka ends up finishing her with a power bomb. Um, but yeah, but it was a very good match. Uh, so the next, so if, if we had to split Donna Del Mondo into Hollywood and Wolfpack, is Shuri the leader of the Wolfpack? Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay. Yes, and w- w- trust me, we're, we're getting to that. We're getting to that. Um, so, uh, the very next weekend set of shows, two shows. Uh, first match, Hannon versus Saki. Um, Saki is, like, her role is more clear now to me than it was before. Like, Saki is basically filling that role that um, that Nasu Samira used to have, where, like, she was she used to wrestle the girl, like, the young girls, mm-hmm. and she was due to county matches. Like, Saki's doing it, but and she's beating up the young girls, but she is not doing comedy with it. She just be, she's just having regular matches with these with, with like the Wakas and and you know um, Lady C's of the world and and Kogos of the world and just beating their asses. And like um, I gotta say, like they're they're entertaining for what they are, um, mm-hmm. but like you know it, it's cool that she has a defined role when it was like you know when she first turned on. Um, Oh my, my you were like, are they really trying to make her like a top are they really trying to make her like at the top of you know, someone that challenges for belts? That doesn't that don't sound like a good idea to me. 
Um, but but yeah, uh, it seems like they've you know fi- they finally figured it out. And so I she, think so. She's QT. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Like it, like I didn't see the um, I didn't see the match with uh with Hook. But yeah, like um, if there was a Hook level, you know, if there was a super rookie in, in Stardom, mm-hmm. and maybe uh, this Miyu girl is uh the the, the new girl, um, yeah, uh. She would probably, you know, beat Saki. After you know she's been beating down all the other rookies and young girls. So, um, next match after that, you get a uh, you get uh, Kogo versus Natspoy. Uh, and I gotta say, uh, Kogo is easily the, the best uh, wrestler in that Futures division. That's not like Hannon. Mm-hmm. Like she, like if I were to compare her to like. Unagi, when Unagi first got to start him, I think she's, I think she's like a step ahead. Um, so to see, I don't, I don't know how many matches she's had in her career before she got to start him. I, I, I looked before, but I forgot. But like, I think she, um, like she's way better than, um, than like Waka or Mai. Um, like she might, she might, you know, she might, she's not in that like Mariah tier. Cause you know, like I don't, I don't like Momo's not coming out here, or Momo Mokoko's not coming out here and having like a four star match against Shuri in the, in the main event of a pay per view, no time soon. But like, I think she's going to definitely be good. Um, but at the end, uh, but anyway, like you know, um, that's Poi with in Kogo. I, I'm sure they had some interaction at, in Akra's Girls before um, that's Poi left for Tokyo Shi Pro. But um, they had a, they had a good match, and then at the end, like that's Poi finished her off with uh, the the you know the Alexa Bliss flip. Uh, dive off the top rope, um, and they they like uh, they like shook hands at the end or fist bumped at the end. Uh, second match, uh, the former tr- uh, trios champions uh, Tam Mina and Unagi versus I'm oh, sorry, uh, the, sorry Tam Mina Unagi and Waka versus Julia Hameka, <laughs> Julia Hameka Tekla and. I don't know why this keeps jumping. I can't see. All right. Uh, Tekla and uh, Mai. So um, they were basically setting the table for to get down to closing stretch where um, you're getting Mai and uh, Waka in there together. But like ultimately in the finishing with uh, Tekla and Waka and uh, Tekla ends up being uh, Waka with her, her you know, um, sister, double underhook sister Abigail Blade Runner looking deal. Um, mm-hmm. Good match. Um, next match you get uh Mayu Hazuki and Kaguma versus Shuri, Micah, and Mirai. Um, this match was very good. Uh, Shuri and Mayu they were previewing, you know, the match that that you know they'll probably end up having the second night of um in the main event of Sumo Hall, and like. That match is going to be awesome. You know, they already had a Red Belt match in 2020. That match was awesome. Like, I think they'll have a better one this time. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I think that, like, my, you know, my only got so many more of these, it seems. And, like, I'm sure she saw those, like, uh, you know, the the talk about, like, those uh, Shuri and Utami matches. She's probably like, all right. <laughs> all right. Um, but, yeah, uh, at the end, Mariah ends up beating, uh, I'm sorry, Mariah ends up getting uh, Hazuki up on her shoulders to try to give her a finish, but like, to, but the, the bell ends up ringing. Um, I ended up giving it three and a half stars. It was a very good match. Like, Mariah and Hazuki were really good, but like, I, you know, I, I, I saw that match. I was like, I don't think anyone's going to get beat. And sure enough, um, next match after that, uh, Utami, Saya, Azumi, and Lady C versus. Uh, Oh, it'll tie again, except this time is not, um, it's not Waka. I'm not Waka. It's not, um, Saki. It's Rena in here. Um, so, you know, playing off the story when they, you know, set up the match and they sh- talk shit on, um, to Lady C about her sucking, uh, they end up getting down the final stretch where Lady C is in there with Rena and, um, Lady C ends up getting the win. She ends up, um, lifting, doing like a, backdrop and then at the apex she turns it into a choke slam on the way down 
it was it was fun looking. I, I I don't know what the hell she calls it. I don't know if she has a name for it yet. But like, uh, it was cool looking. And then she ends up by uh, getting the win on on Rena. And then she talks about how like you know that's her first win in a main event. The first time she's ever actually like pinned somebody in the main event of a show. So like she was super gassed to like you know be able to close the show, right. um, to do the sign off and all that stuff. Uh, so uh, n- next show, um, the Sunday show, the sixth of March, you end up getting Waka and. And Saki, Waka, or sorry, Saki whooped that ass, ends up beating her with, a, uh, I believe it was a kill switch. No, I'm sorry. She beat her with a reverse key lock. She made her tap. Sorry. <laughs> She's like, Saki can see him her stretching folk. <laughs> she actually, uh, she had to slap Waka in some cool looking submission. I, I, I have a clip, I have a, uh, photo of it I have to send to you, but basically, like, she has the arms locked in between her legs and basically, like, string while having her legs, or sorry, ha- having her arms. She also uses, uh, Saki uses her legs like, almost like, triangle choke, uh, Waka. She doesn't get to submit, she lets go eventually. But, uh, second match, um, very good match. Hannah versus Azumi, um, I almost gave this three and a half stars for a second match on the Stardom, you know, Road 2 show. Like, uh, they're very good together. Azumi, uh, Rich, I know you've said before, uh, that, like, Azumi don't beat nobody up. She, well, she beat up, she beat up. She beat up Hannon. She beat up Hannon. Uh, it, 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 you know, rough it's, and it's, tough. Was the the thug and the mugging of, of Azumi. Bro, it, but it was it was um, it was the same like absurd absurd thing when it was like Hannon and in that support. Where it's like this woman is like five. <laughs> this older woman by two years or whatever is like five foot nothing or four eleven, and she's wrestling. You know. A a per, her junior, but her junior is five six. She's way bigger than her, but she's beating her ass. And it, but it like it looks believable. But it's also, but I know that like it's also you know, but I know it's also an absurdity. But like it, they made it work. Like um, Hannah worked from underneath, so like crazy for Azumi, like just forming shit out of her and and kicking shit out of her. Um, and Hannah ended up working over her arm, and uh, Azumi ended up uh, being able to come like her arm being hurt. And then um, she ended up going to the top rope and um, she ended up going to the top rope and beating her with a double uh, diving foot stomp. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, she gave, she did a double diving foot stomp and Hannah kicked out. And that got the big pop. Like, oh, like, oh, she's finished. She kicked. And then, like, uh, Zumi ends up getting her with the uh, that figure four uh, German suplex bridge. So, so I, I did get that email with the new Donald Del Mondo. Don't, yeah, theme. don't play it yet. Don't play it yet. Okay. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. So, um, actually, this is the perfect time. No, no, one more match, one more match. So, uh, next match, you get Tam and, uh, and Mina and Unagi versus Utami, Saya, and Lady C. So, I forgot to say, after Saya, or sorry, after C got that win, uh, she was super gassed. She said, like, look, like, how about me and, and Kamatani and Utami challenged for the trios titles against, you know, my him at Poi. So like, uh, so they put them out there against the former, um, the previous, the, the predecessors to my him at Poi as a uh, trios champions, uh, Cos- cosmic angels. Uh, and they end up wrestling to a 15 minute draw. Really fun. While doing this, this also sets up, this also set up, uh, like the white belt, stuff that's going on at uh sumo hall where like you had tam in there and like she's in there with utami and it's and it's great and then um utami wins and she tags in kamatani and then kamatani and tam do the, the shit that you saw them do at sumo hall some of it not not the, not the dragon suplex or the middle rope to the floor on each other's heads but they did some of that stuff and that was fun as well um they ended up going down to the closing stretch with uh with Unagi and with Lady C, and like I gotta say, the Talls did a really good job at, in the closing stretch. Um, at the end, um, Lady C ended up hitting uh, Unagi with a choke slam. Uh, Unagi kicked out, and then the bell rang right as, right as she kicked out. Um, and then they, you know, they grabbed her the hair, and they were about, like they about to fight again. They had to get pulled apart. So um, yeah, like they did a they did a decent job of like of, you know setting up that like. Lady C ain't no pushover. They're just gonna be cannon fodder, which you know she'll probably be in that match against Mahim Poi. But like, they're giving her a little something, and then like they're also setting up like you know the interactions between um, 
you know, all three of the people in the white belt uh, matches at Sumo Hall. So I thought it was a nice touch. Um, so then the next match, you end up getting uh, Julia, Marai, Tekla, and Mai Sakurai versus Oedo Tai. And Rich, I want you, they didn't play this music. This should have been the music they should have played um, coming down to the ring. Rich, can you pull that up and play that on the stream, my brother? Sure can. I'll lean in so you can line it up. No, no, no. I'll, I'll fix it in post for the podcast. Okay. You just go ahead and play it on the stream. All right. <laughs> new, 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 new world order. <laughs> for, 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 for life. For life. This is the yeah. best part. Do 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 Yes. A a a staple of WCW Thunder in Saturday night. Yes. Yes. Like um we'll get to it at the end of the show, but like yes, I uh the, the the Donald Armando B team came out. Um, so, Mm-mm-mm. yeah. So, uh, versus Oedo Tai, uh, they had a pretty good match. At the end of it, you had, I was surprised by the finish by this one. Um, Rowaka in, Te- in Tekla ends up going into the closing stretch. And after various uh, near falls and whatnot and saves and, and changing momentum, um, Rowaka ends up beating Tekla with a, a freezer bomb, top rope splash. Um, and I was like, wow, that's interesting. Is she going to challenge for the Esti? Oh, she is. That's exactly why they did that. Okay, get it. I get it. Okay, that's cool. So um, they're going to do Mar- They're going to do uh, Tekla versus uh, Rowaka some point in the next month or so uh, for the SWA belt. It won't be at Sumo Hall, um, but it will happen eventually. Um, and then the main event, Mayu Hazuki... Kaguma and Kogo versus the Donald Del Mondo A team of Shiri, Nazpoi, Micah, and Hameka. Um, so uh, they more interaction between Mayu and Shiri, and it's great. Uh, you get Hazuki in here with uh, Hameka, and that's fun. Um, and you know, a bunch of saves and a floor dive here and there. Ultimately, you end up getting Shiri in there with Kogo and. Like they are doing everything, uh, uh, stars doing everything in their power to try to, you know, they're like, we know this ain't gonna go well. We know it's not gonna go well. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta cheat. We can't be no fair one. It, it, it won't last. Still didn't work. Shuri ends up. I don't know if this made Shuri mad because they was cheating. Star, or stars kept interfering uh, from breaking momentum and everything. But like, she ends up slapping on a new fucking stretch muffler submission. Rich, she has another one. This time, it, instead of like you know trapping trapping the arm with the leg at the bottom mm-hmm. or at the top, now she's figured out how to get the the other arm and hammer lock it. I, I don't want no smoke. I don't. It. I was like, what the hell is this? They put the name of the of the submission at the bottom of the screen. I don't even know what the hell how to pronounce that. I don't even know. But just know it's a stretch muffler with a hammer lock added to it and I was like yo she this woman keeps finding new ways to, to, to break people um so at the end um uh you know Shuri does a sign off and you know Donald Armando does her sign off by calling out all the members names and saying we are women of the world and then in their own personalized you know goodbye they say you know whatever like you know um so Shuri this time Normally, they basically look down the road. They look, you know, furthest from me on the left, furthest me on the right, and then come closer and in the middle, you finish with you. She goes, Tekla, Julia, Mirai, Sakurai, Nasapoi, Hameka, Micah, Shuri, Woman of the World, Donald Armando, Goodbye, right? And once she did it that way, Julia looked over at her, and then they and they got face to face, and then they walked off. Or, and I was like, "Oh, okay, it's happening." Like this whole A team B team thing, it's happening. Um, I know there was a press con by this point. The press conference had already happened, and they mentioned on the press conference that like Julia said some of the lines of like 
after this match, like whoever loses or whatever else, like I don't think because we both want the red belt so much, I don't think that we can stay together as as president constructed. So like they're already doing it, and like thank you. I, I need I there, it's too many eight of them. You want to push seven of them? It's too much. Break, break it, it up. Bring it up. Break it up. Good. Like they can do. They can fight each. They can fight to do the dom or uh, prominence Man, gotta, thing. They got to break that, up like Rockefeller do, records, right. bro. They can do the prominence thing, and then after the prominence thing, they can go straight to this to the DDM, the, the implosion of DDM. They've been together since what uh, February 2020, uh, Julian and Shuri. So yeah, like it's appropriate time. Like they're gonna need. They're gonna need to break that up or whatever else. Like. Shuri's too good to be a number two in a faction. Sorry. She can't be Red Bell champion in, 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 as number two in a faction. It, it makes no sense. Like, she needs yep. something in her own image. I don't know if this is, we're actually going to, if she basically takes, the, you know, the original, or four of the original five from Donald Armando, and either she, or she still stays Donald Armando, and Julius na- renames her shit, whatever else, even though she started Donald Armando, who knows. But, it's presently constructed. These, it's, it needs to be addressed. It was the elephant in the room, you know, from the second that Shuri uh, seemed like she was going to win a red belt. It was like, when is, like, it's only so long for Julie was going to eventually be red belt champion. There has to be some interaction among this. They, they're doing it in the first night of, of the Sumo Hall weekend. So, yeah, good. I love it. I'm, I'm happy for that. Like, give, give Shuri her own team. Yeah. The Shuri Dojo. <laughs> So, so yeah, like, uh, I thought that, um, I thought that two of the shows were, were good. I thought one, I thought the other two were okay, uh, for, for row two shows, but, uh, um, well, you know, like next week we'll get to the row to the, uh, new blood one and, uh, the Quirk and hall and the other show in between that. But, uh, <clears throat> that is, that is stardom from the past two or two of the last three weeks. So there was a question from JML that I forgot to, uh, it was from the discord, uh, he said, do you think Sasha Banks will ever main event a pay-per-view again, giving the current direction of WWE? No. I am tempted to say no as well. I think there's always Ronda? a chance she can she can accidentally backdoor her way into like some October pay-per-view main event or something like that. But it feels like there's just two like they've chose. Like well, they've 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 shown their hands too many times. I, I don't even know if that if that's even true anymore because like Think of those Hell in a Cell matches she had, right? Like, the Bailey one didn't main event. The Becky one didn't main event. Like, mm-hmm. the one with Charlotte main events hit in 2016. Yep. But that was six years ago, or almost six years ago. Yeah. So, like, even then. Imagine her main eventing the Russell. Look, main eventing the WrestleMania and then never headlining a pay per view ever again. That would just be like, I feel like that's damning evidence. <laughs> What is damning? Uh, is that damning on her end or damning on their end? Of, oh, like, on their end of, wh- okay, of okay, what okay, they okay. were doing. Yeah, they're like. Well, they're also. Well, yes, but they're also very incompetent too. So I, so you, because so you don't know which is the egg, which is, which is the chicken, which is the egg, which which one is really the starter of this. Is it more of their incompetence or more of them, be, you know, trying to you know trying to you know get clout off of of main eventing two black women or whatever else because like you can talk about how shitty their build was or whatever else because it was but like they're fucking up all these bills anyway too so it ain't so like going or since then too so it wasn't just like you know it was something they're main eventing and they're screwing it up it's like nah they screw up most things they do so Saturday, um, there's going to be a New Japan fan meetup. Keeping a strong style is going to be hosting it. It's at the Overflow Brewing Company in St. Pete. It's going to be 770 First Ave North. Uh, and it's going to be at 1.30 p.m. And this is before the um, key, the strong style or the strong style evolved event from New Japan Pro Wrestling, I believe, swerves on that show in the semi main event. Jay White will be facing Chris Sabin. And overall, that card looked really great. And I was like, man, I think I'm going to go to this show at the last minute. Oh, you're going to go? I, yeah, I think I'm going to I'm going to go. Okay. So if y'all want to stop in, if you're local in the area, like, you know, you know we're, we're going to be out there. Um, and we'll be at the, uh, like, the meetup is at the Overflow Brewing Company before that. Um, so you never know who you might run into. So. 
So, quick question. Is that the same place where you went to in 2020 in January? I don't believe it is the same um, uh, meetup place that we did okay. it at. Okay. I would have to check on the name of that one. Okay. All right, then. Um, all right. I, 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 I can't remember. Like, that was, I mean, it was, it was January 2020, but, like, that may as well have been, like, seven years ago. Bro, that was, like, the last event. Almost of the free world, or one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't have anything else to you. Nope, that, that'd be it. Appreciate y'all listening to the show as always, and we'll holla at y'all. Yep. Uh, thanks for listening, y'all. Be sure to rate us on our app you're using to listen to this with. Um, you know, if you're listening on the stream, hit us up with the bits. Uh, yeah, if bits. you're listening on, <laughs> um. Uh, if you're not, uh, go to Red Circle and drop us off with a donation. Um, and be sure to listen to the other shows on the network. Um, besides One Nation Radio, you have Keeping the Strong Style. You have the Ricky and Clyde Wrestling Show. You have Grumman Washes Shit. You have the Grave Consequences Podcast. You have 8 Bit Suplex. You have All Things Elite. You have Great Match Generator. And you have AW Match Guide. Thanks for listening, y'all. Later. Peace.